Responders, for all adoring fans, we pray steer the wheels of our lives that we may live faithfully the grand race of the journey of our lives, meeting you at our own finish lines with a glorious checkered flag. Blessed may you be. Amen. And remain standing as here to perform our national anthem. Please welcome Country Pride Entertainment Nashville recording artist Tom Dixon. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag Star-spangled banner yet away on the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's the tenth race of the Xfinity Series season, and the is next on Fox.
Welcome back to Dover, Delaware. The Dash for Cash is back, and apparently it's something today's driver guest analyst takes literally. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Brad Kozlowski hustling trackside upstairs to the broadcast booth today to help bring you all the action. Let's see if he's made it. Oh, there he is, just in the nick of time. It's Adam Alexander, Michael Waltrip, and BK. Tie, makeup, <laughs> jacket, microphone. You, you're ready to go here in the booth, huh? Yeah, I, I guess this is how Clark Kent feels, but uh, <laughs> glad to be up here. It's always an honor to join you guys here today on Fox at the Monster. This is one of my favorite tracks, and you know, the last few races I've been in the booth have been the best Xfinity <laughs> yes. races of the year. So uh, no pressure today, right, guys? Uh, I, what I love, Brad, you were just out here on this really tough racetrack. What are these drivers faced with? The rubber's all over the road. They're going to be running okay. high and low. What can we expect? Well, Michael, there's a reason why they call this track the monster. It's such a tough track, guys. You can run the top, you can run the bottom, and if one little thing goes wrong, it bites you, and it ends your day very, very easily. The monster, she bites. I'll say this, though. Some first-time guys have had a lot of luck here. 13 drivers in the history of this race have gotten their first career victory. That's a major statement when you talk about the difficulties here at Dover. It is, and you know, I remember I have one win here in the Xfinity Series. I remember thinking, what a challenge this track is. The first time I went here, you can really feel the speed at this track. Well, let's go trackside now. Get the command of fire engines at Dover. We know when the lights go on, Brad Keselowski is ready. Are the Xfinity Series ready for Dover? We'll uh, see when we come back on Fox. Dover International Speedway, one of the most unique places on the schedule. Uh, tough place to pass at, so qualifying was really important this morning, uh, as are restarts and the initial start of the race uh, for everybody trying to get uh, get position out there. But final moments before having to walk out to driver intros, and uh, just in the lounge, 
going over some stuff with my crew chief, Chad, watching uh, cup practice, see if I can pick up any last minute things. And uh, we'll go out here and race for, for a win and $100,000, see what we can get. The clouds have rolled in at Dover, no rain yet. We are ready to get it going in heat one. Let's go from the driver's seat with the guy that rolls off eighth, Ryan Reed. Ryan Reed, this is Brad Keselowski in the Fox Sports booth. Do you have a copy? Yeah, loud and clear, Brad. Great. Well, good to see you out here today. Uh, everybody at home wants to know you have four starts here, best finish of 11th. What's it going to take for you to improve on that today? Well, uh, I'm sure you know after cup practice, this place is hot and slick right now. So, uh, you know, hopefully they got, we fought a tight race car in qualifying, so hopefully we got some better turn in it. Um, you know, I think that uh, the guys have done a great job on our Lily Diabetes, American Diabetes Association Ford. Uh, we just got to keep improving, uh, stay on top of the track, and continue to change as rubber gets built up. So hopefully uh, our guys are ready to make some adjustments during our pit stops, and everyone's ready to at home on the uh, I know I'm looking forward to having some fun. Hey, Ryan, it's Michael Waltrip. You're starting on the outside. Do you like that? Do you think you can make ground up there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I was uh, watching the uh, the Camping World Truck Series race that you were announcing last night, and uh, the outside definitely seemed like the preferred groove. So uh, the inside seemed like they struggled on restart, so hopefully that'll help us here on this initial start and we can get going and have a good start. Well, have a good heat, and we're going to check in with you after this race. So uh, go get them, bud. Thanks, guys. That's from the driver's seat. Now, everything you need to know in 45 seconds. Pit headlines with the folks downstairs. We start with Jamie Little. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Adam. Well, Daryl Wallace Jr. came into this place with high expectations. This is his favorite racetrack. But just three laps into practice on Friday, the monster bit him. He's in a backup car today. He told me he needs to focus on getting to the front and being patient, something he's done many times. Matt Yoakum. Jamie, you can feel the sense of urgency sprinkled throughout the field, not because of the, the weather that could possibly be rolling in, but it's about trying to lock himself into the chase. Eric Jones, he's already locked in with his Bristol win. He'd love to add another trophy to his racing resume. He's got a great starting spot on the pole, Chris, and a great pit stall here on Pit Road. Well, and Joey Logano trying to still find that first win for Team Penske in 2016. Well, now he's at a racetrack where the odds are in his favor. He's got four wins here, and he knows track position is so important. So Joey Logano's got one goal, win the heat so he can start up front in the main. And if you're keeping score at home, it's like everything you need to know. Pit headlines in 50 seconds. They, they just missed out on the shot clock there. Well, I want, what I want you to know is the aggression that Alex Bowman is going to have in this heat race. You can see we've got two heats. The main's going to be 120 laps. Pit road speed is 35 miles an hour. Grip level is three to four. The clouds are coming, so that could be increasing. So that could mean more speed even. Here's the other thing we got to keep in mind. In fact, we haven't had any rain here since yesterday afternoon. You talk about all the rubber in the racetrack going to continue to mount up as this race continues. Pacing the field today, the 2016 Toyota Camry XSE leading around the 20 drivers that make up heat one. Eric Jones just shifting to that outside lane. He's the control car fastest in qualifying earlier today. And Highlighted in red, when you see the starting lineup come in, will be the drivers that hold down those transfer spots as far as being eligible for Dash for Cash in the main. I think the biggest thing I've learned with these Dash for Cash heat races is you got to qualify up front. You have to be aggressive on these heat races and, and make sure you're in a position to get in the Dash for Cash. Get all you can on the first start so you can try to be one of those top two to, to be in the hunt for the Dash for Cash. So that's a few of the things that I've seen so far uh, as a driver trying to get ready for these heat races. So they know, Brad, while they're bunched up, that's a chance to make a move, to get a spot. Alex Bowman down there on the inside of the second row, he needs to pass one of those two in front of him if he wants to be Dash for Cash eligible. And we saw some controversy on the restarts in the truck series the last couple of weeks. Do you clearly understand what your responsibility is as the second place guy in this race? What kind of respect you have to give to that leader? Well, I don't know about clearly understanding, but I clearly know what we're going to see. We're going to see a great restart here because what I'm seeing is Eric Jones Jones flipped. You talked about Adam. Uh, he's going to restart on the outside instead of the traditional inside. And we've seen that be a huge advantage on restarts. But keep in mind, restarts are much, much earlier on the racetrack than the initial start. So the advantage there should be a key part to what we see here early in the race. Eric Jones, Justin Allgaier, 1-2. Alex Bowman starting third in Heat 1. 
a driver that's not been in a car since November, but carrying in a lot of confidence. First of nine races driving for Junior Motorsports. The team has won three times this year as an organization, twice with that 88 going to victory lane, including our last dash for cash race with the boss man, Dale Jr. was behind the wheel. 40 laps here at Dover. Heat one underway. Green flag of the air at the Monster Mile. That later start you're going to see right now. Justin Algar is able to hold even with Eric Jones on the start. This could be a key part of the race and even inch forward. Great job by Algar down on the bottom. He's got an advantage off two. He's going to grab the lead. And Michael, that was that restart versus start difference. Different spots on the track have different advantages on the start. The inside usually has an advantage. Alex Bowman able to also clear his lane and move up to third. I was waiting for Jones to have that momentum off of turn two. Didn't get it. Allgaier leads the opening lap. Jones trying to step it up about a half a groove. Oh, got a couple mm. of cars together in the back that looked like maybe the 48 of Poole bumped into our... No, that was Bubba Wallace up against Poole. Battle for third here. Paul Menard looking to the inside of Alex Bowman. Right behind him, the 22 of Joey Logano, your teammate who's won here four times. Joey loves this track, and that's one of the keys to getting around here. People talk about what does it take to be successful at the Monster. you got to love the challenge. Let's go back and look at the teammates. Remember, Roush Fenway teammates got together late last year at Dover. Early here, sideways Bubba Wallace and nearly taps the 16 of Ryan Reed. He was battling that car. Inside, 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 44 tight with him. So you can see Bubba's got a nice advantage. Bubba Steve Wallace here is still fighting hard, the 88 and the 2. Joey's got a front row seat on board with the 22 here. And Joey's got to be careful, too, because he knows Paul, he knows that two car of Paul Menard can get loose down on the bottom, and he wants to give him enough room to where if that does happen, he's got somewhere to go. The man leading right now, Justin Allgaier. Great start for them, Matt. The concern he had was the start, knowing that Eric Jones would take the outside. Justin told me he felt like from watching the Truck Series race, the outside lane was going to be better on the start and restart. But now he feels like that outside is lost a little bit from practice. Menard, another look to the inside Whoa, of Alex there he is. Big contact. That's going to bring Joey Logano underneath Paul Menard. Paul Menard's a little faster than Bowman. He's maybe holding this group up just a touch. This place is all about momentum, right, Brad? Yes, absolutely. And that 88 is just a little bit tight, which is killing his momentum. You can see it as he comes off the corner. And that's allowed Brendan Poole to slip into that battle. What a great race we have. Paul Menard's lost a little ground here at the start. Chris? Well, lost a little ground because he was trying to gain a little ground. He's in a backup car in this race yesterday in that first practice. Got into the wall hard. He said the right front tire got into the ball joint, the suspension, and cut the tire. That's what put him in the wall. He said this backup car doesn't have all the Richard Childress racing updates that the other cars had. But obviously, this car doing pretty well today. But that team this year has been great. Doesn't matter if it's Menard or Austin Dillon behind the wheel. They have finished in the top eight in the first nine races of the year. And here's that tight racing we saw a moment ago. See, it leaves a little mark there on the 88 right uh, behind the left front tire. And what happens there, guys, is the cars just run together as the track narrows up on exit. And when you lose a little bit of that air on the right side door of your car, it, it just climbs the hill faster than what you want it to if you're Paul Menard. And, he just run out of room. He looked like he had a lot of momentum through the center, tried to take advantage of that on exit, but the car just snapped away from him. And now that's allowed Joey Logano to start the pursuit of Alex Bowman. Bowman's doing a great job. He's been bounced off of, had heat all over him, but he's holding that third spot. About a fourth of the way through this opening heat race at Dover. It's Justin Allgaier, Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, the top five.
15 laps into our opening heat race here at Dover International Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And they don't get much more challenging than the Monster. These cars are carrying so much speed down in the corners and these Goodyear tires just take that beating that the, the teams put on them. And you can see, look at Algar, his car's hanging out in the back. He wants that left front right down on the apron so that that car will handle better and corner better. Puts a lot of pressure on the right front tire. There's no track like Dover to go and sit down in the corner and watch the cars because it's almost a two-story drop into the corners, and then you climb that out. And think of all the load that puts on the tire, guys. You're pulling over two Gs here, and the load on that tire is just amazing. So Goodyear does a great job to get a tire that will even survive that challenge. Leaders going around the slower car of Alex Gwinnett there in the white 97. And, you know, Eric Jones not letting all Geyer get away. And he's starting to mess around with his line, too, Brad. We talked about the high side. You can see Jones wasn't making any ground on Al Geyer down on the bottom. He's starting to move up a little bit. And that lap by, he was about a tenth better than our leader, Justin Al Geyer. Yeah, it looks like it's definitely working for him, especially in one and two. He's going to catch him, and we're going to have a battle for the lead here anytime. It looks like, to me, Al is a little bit loose. That car's really sticking low and he's turning good in the center. And look, as soon as he sees Jones coming, where does he go? Right up in his lane. Good move, Justin. Folks, this is what I love about race car drivers. Oh, that's working for you. You're catching me. Well, why don't I just go ahead and block that? But isn't this what the heats are all about? Go out, little R&D, put yourself where you need to be Absolutely. from a knowledge standpoint for that 120-lap main. And Jones really working him over good now. That was a great move by Algar, though, to do what Brad said, run where Jones was running and try to take that line away. He's not as fast up there, but he blocked the advance. Be interesting to see what he decides to do in three. To the bottom he goes. Every lap is a decision right now for Justin Algar. Do I block high? Do I run my normal line on the bottom? What's going to work for me here? And you see he's, he's trying to think of that and watching his mirror, I'm sure, every straightaway. This will be low again. Yes. He's going to have lap, car, lap traffic in front of him. This will definitely change the game. There goes Eric Jones around the outside. Started on the pole, lost the lead at the start when he selected the outside lane, but just passed halfway into our first heat race of the afternoon. Put the 20 car on point. Well, these cars mixed it up for the lead. That's where you want to be, first or second. That means they're going to be dash for cash eligible. All the other guys racing to be a part of the dash for cash tonight or this afternoon in the mains, they were liking the, the leaders mixing it up, closing ground on them. Well, I'm sure Algar didn't want, want to give up the lead for this heat, but at least he's still in the dash for cash, and, and that makes it a little bit easier to take. See Jones and Algar highlighted in red. That's how we'll keep track of the drivers that currently are in the transfer positions when you talk about those that are eligible for the dash for cash. When we were at Richmond, Brennan Poole, a part of that mix. He's seventh so far this afternoon, Jamie. Well, last time we saw him was two weeks ago at Talladega. The heartbreak. He thought he had that race won. It would have been a first career win, but he ended up with third and handled it with such class. As far as today, he's already slipped back two positions. A little loose on initial throttle and tight exit. So both ends of the spectrum. And that's what I love about these heats, Adam. Not only can you learn what your car is like, where the groove uh, your car wants to run in is, but you can also tell your crew chief what your car is doing. And when they change tires, they can make adjustments to those cars. And that means it'll be faster and handle better for the main event, meaning that we could see better racing because of those adjustments. Haven't talked a whole lot about Joey Logano since we got going at the start. Has worked his way up to fourth. Saw him in traffic there. It settled in behind Alex Bowman. Bowman running third, 3.6 seconds behind race leader Eric Jones. Another half a second behind him is Logano. But Logano on the move as we come off turn four. 14 laps to go in heat one. Logano likes the low side. Bowman's going to move up the track. You can see out of Joey's windshield that he's right there. Can't seem to close the, the last 10 car lengths or so. These Couple cars are pretty close in speed right here, so it's hard to, to make a game. The bottom, but 22 eats you up a little bit. You can handle it around the bottom. 
That's the word from Alex Bowman's radio. But a couple of spots behind Joey Logano is another four, Darrell Wallace Jr. He really has done a nice job in the early going when you factor in they're in a backup car, didn't get as much practice as they would have liked here yesterday. Yeah, he's running lap times that uh, could move him up to third pretty easily here. So we'll see if he can continue to gain. He's been gaining on these cars in front of him here for the last few laps. Speaking of gaining up front, Justin Allgaier has moved to the top of the racetrack, and he has caught our leader, Eric Jones. Look at that run. Watch how high he goes in the corners. He's making it work up there. A lot of experimenting Whoa. going on here in our first heat. Well, he's driving the wheels <laughs> off of it, too, Adam. When you get that far sideways, that means you're committed to the top. And uh, give him credit. He's uh, driving his guts out right here. The other thing, you don't need to really worry about taking care of your tires. It's only 40 laps. Let it all hang out, right? And, and that's a great point. When you run the high side of the track, you can see how it's a little bit lighter in color. You know, you got some of the darker color to the bottom where the rubber's in the track. And that lighter color has just a little bit more grip. But it's a lot harder on the tires, as it were. That that could cause an issue if you had really long runs, but this is just a heat race. Only 40 laps. He'll be able to get away with that. Look at that momentum. He takes off turn four to close right in on our leader, Jones. And what I like, Brad, is he is challenging that car. He's got it sideways. He's running it hard at him, and that means he's going to get a good check of his tires. That team will be able to see what he has for rubber left after 40 laps, and he'll know just exactly how hard he can go in the main. He's got a good run right here this time. Eric Jones is going to give him a little bit of room. That's a very gentleman move. Eric Jones probably wants to learn from Justin Algar. How'd you do that? I caught you when you were up there, and now you passed me back by doing, going even higher yet. I think that's the highest we've seen anyone running. Justin Allgaier coming off his best run of the season, a runner-up to his teammate Elliot Sadler a couple of weeks ago at Talladega. Eight straight poles for the Gibbs organization, but we said it during qualifying. This team, Junior Motorsports, the seven car that Allgaier's driving for, they've closed the gap to the Joe Gibbs cars. They're definitely 20, better at qualifying. To seven to go the line. But in race conditions, we saw Dell Jr. win at Richmond, and we see now Algar driving around one of those fast Joe Gibbs Toyotas. Although it isn't over yet, he's fighting back on the inside. And where Justin's really got an advantage is with the slower traffic that's running on the bottom. Justin can get that advantage of both the speed of the top, but also the clean air. That's a huge double advantage. And the winner of this heat locks themselves into a front row starting position in the main. Foregone conclusion right now, when you look at the running order, that these two will move on and run for the $100,000 via the dash for cash, but they both would like to be on the front row for that 120 lap main track position, huge at this place. You say foregone conclusion, Adam, I've raced here before. I never take for granted <laughs> I've got another lap in me, especially when you're driving as hard as Algar is. That car slipping sideways, they can get away from you here in a hurry. Yeah, there's no foregone conclusions at the Monster. That's why it's called the Monster. There's four laps to go, and anything can still happen here. You guys aren't helping me out, you know that? Well, I'm I'm, I'm not, I get a little nervous when I, when I start to assume things are going to happen a certain way here at the Monster because she will get you. Or is it a he? Miles, I guess it's a he. Well, here it is by the numbers. The next guy in line, when you talk about eligibility and the dash for cash, Alex Bowman, who is third. You see at top of your screen, he's 3.7 seconds back. What he's hoping is those two will continue to race, maybe get into each other, and he'll put himself in great position to move on and run for the cash, completing the top five here in Heat 1. Joey Logano, Paul Menard, a couple of cup regulars. We talked about Darrell Wallace Jr., the job he's done early, sixth. Brennan Poole, seventh. Ryan Reed, J.J. Yaley, and Blake Cook, the top ten here with just about three laps to go. And, and Bowman, I mean, he's one spot away, but a miss is as good as a mile. I mean, an inch is a mile because he's not going to get to – to go for that 100,000. So that's got to be disappointing for him. He's got a great car. He doesn't get to race very often. He's put himself right up front, but it isn't going to be enough if these two don't have an issue. And I think Eric Jones is maybe just a little bit better than Algaier. He's found that same groove Algaier has been running. I think he's got a little bit more pace in his car. He just maybe found that groove a little bit too late. And oh. that, that kid is special. He's proven to us behind the wheel. He, he is the real deal. And he's learning right now, right, Brad? He's filling out what his car will do in different spots on this track. This is going to help him in the main later. Absolutely. And you know what? If you're watching this heat race right now and you're in that second heat race, do you think they're going to go to the top right away, Michael? I bet, because it's got all the speed. One lap to go. Eric Jones batting 1,000 this year. When you talk about heat events and the dash for cash races, 
Won his heat both at Bristol and at Richmond, but it appears he's going to come up short here in heat one at Dover. Justin Allgaier into turn three with the top spot. Running different lines, they exchange the top spot on more than one occasion, but with a checkered flag in the air, Justin Allgaier delivers in our opening heat. Great job. Either water tip or oil tip is working fast, no idea. Give Justin Algar a lot of credit. He found a groove that worked for his car. Maybe didn't have the fastest car, but he drove his guts out, and that's what got him the win. Heat one complete here at Dover International Speedway. Justin Allgaier, Eric Jones won two. They will move on and run for the cash later this afternoon. The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Xfinity. Change the way you experience TV with Xfinity X1 and by Dodge. Welcome back to Dover International Speedway. Danielle Trotta, Larry McReynolds inside the Hollywood Hotel on Fox. Heat one is in the books. Of the two Dash for Cash races we've seen thus far, now at Dover, Larry, did you like the passing and excitement that you saw? We had a pass for the lead twice, and I do see a lower groove and an upper groove working. The two drivers that transfer one step closer to that $100,000, Justin Allgaier and Eric Jones. And all of our Sprint Cup Series regulars, they were in this race, none in Heat 2. Good point. The highest finishing cup driver was Joey Logano in fourth. Let's send it down to Jamie Little. It was a great battle, and Justin Allgaier comes out on top. You were able to move around, went up high, went low. A good battle. What'd you learn there that you'll carry over to the main event? Well, the biggest thing is that the track is changing a lot as we go. Um, you know, we saw with Sprint Cup Series practice that so the track moved around a lot, and obviously as these races go on, it's going to get even more. But huge props to the guys back at the shop. Everybody at Junior Motorsports, uh, the Hendrick engines are great, and these guys did an awesome job all weekend. We, we struggled a little bit off the truck. We didn't feel like we were quite where we wanted to, to be at, and Jason Burdett and the boys did a great job and got our TaxLayer.com Chevy where we wanted it to be at. And now we just have to go do it for another 120 laps. It's not going to be quite so easy, uh, you know, this next race. But huge props to Eric. That was a fun race. Uh, you know, he kind of showed me the top a little bit and was able to move up there and, and uh, make our car a little bit better. And now for this next 120, we're going to have to search around a lot and go have some fun. Well, good news is starting on the front row, and he's eligible for a $100,000 dash for cash. Matt? 
Dash for cash decal already across the windshield of Eric Jones. Started first, finished second, but you seem concerned. Yeah, I don't know. We're just missing a little bit something in the uh, in the racer's Camry, but we'll uh, we'll see if we can fix it for the feature there. And um, I don't know. We're just we're just way off, I think, on balance. So we'll uh, we'll see what it does for the feature, but we're gonna do what we can to uh, to get it good and, and try to um, get some speed back in it. Adam. Eric Jones has already won $100,000. Is today Justin Allgaier's day? Much more action. Heat 2 coming up next. One heat down, one to go. And the 10 minute clock is winding down here in Dover, Delaware. Justin Allgaier, Eric Jones, one heat number one. Larry, is it just me or is Junior Motorsports chipping away at the dominance of Joe Gibbs Racing? They were right on their heels in qualifying and I think this kind of bangs the gauntlet a little bit more <laughs> winning here in at least in that heat race. Joe Gibbs Racing has won the pole today. Junior Motorsports won the last two races. Heat number two from Dover is next.
The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. We're seconds away from heat number two. The lineup is stacked, and so is our booth. So let's head upstairs to Adam, Brad, and Michael. All right, Danielle, heat one goes to Justin Allgaier as we get set for heat two. What do you guys think here? Give me a name. I'm going to give you Ty Dillon. He starts third. I think he breaks through and gets into this uh, dash for cash. Daniel Suarez, the guy's finished second four times in trucks, twice in the Xfinity Series. He's got to be thinking, something, I've got to win something. I think this is his time. This is too easy. I take the veteran, Elliot Sadler. Ooh. Last time out, he got the checkered flag trying to do it again. Let's get the command. The engines have fired on heat two. 40 laps of fun at the Monster Mile. We continue live from Dover next on Fox. Back live at Dover International Speedway, set for Heat 2 in the Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200. Let's get a word from our pit reporters before we go green. Jamie, what's happening? Well, Brendan Gaughan is racing in the second heat race for the first time ever, and he told me that's an advantage for him. He was able to listen to his teammates, see what his car was doing, and that's good news. He thinks his car is set up exactly where it needs to be, and with that second groove opening up, that's exactly where the 62 wants to run. Chris? Well, it might be cloudy, but everything's still very sunny for Elliott Sadler coming off that win from Talladega. Now starting second, his best starting position in 2016. Joe Gibbs Racing and Richard Childress Racing have all taken home the big check. Elliott Sadler looking to bring one of those homes to Dale Jr. Matt? Daniel Suarez told me qualifying set the tone for the day. Stellar run earlier. Great starting spot on the grid. Good stall here on pit road. But the biggest thing, he'd love to punch his ticket because it'd be huge in another way. He's never won here. 
twice. He has finished second this season in Xfinity. He would love to score a W, but he loves this place. Said it's fun, expecting good things coming up. And looked really good here yesterday, nearly getting his first career win in the Camping World Truck Series, a runner-up to Matt Crafton. He's driving a Toyota Camry, talking about Daniel Suarez. It's also pacing the field. The 2016 Toyota Camry XSE leads the field to the green today. And starting back in the fourth position, going to be Matt Tift. Hi, Matt. Remember, this is about learning something for the main. So obviously start fourth. You can be aggressive here and just kind of learn and try to do everything you can to Get a few more spots here and uh, learn for the main. We'll have something to race from them. And ten four. That's a young man that's learning fast too, Adam. Remember, he started on the pole at Richmond because of inclement weather, and then he earned the pole at Talladega. He's been pretty impressive when he gets behind the wheel of the 18. Our Ollie's bargain outlet race analysis. Heat two, 40 laps, just like heat one. The main, 120 laps. It'll come your way when we finish things up here in heat two. Saw the pit road speed there. Probably not applicable in the heat, but if we make green flag pit stops in the main, you guys know how difficult it is to come off that banking three and four and hit that 35 miles per hour on pit road. Probably the toughest pit road to come to under green flag conditions here at Dover. Seen a lot of incidents from a lot of experienced drivers. Uh, and I would say in the race, that's going to be a major factor. And, and a lot of speeding t penalties. And this race is short. Our main t today is only 120 laps. You make a mistake on pit road, I don't think you're going to win this race. So they've got to be perfect. And it's the toughest pit road to be perfect on. You talk about those speeding penalties. Last two spring races here at Dover, nine speeding penalties in 2014, 11 of them a year ago, the most throughout the entire season. And it was a game changer. Daniel Suarez, who's earned the pole for Heat 2, got caught twice. His teammate Eric Jones leading had led 70 laps. He also was nabbed for speeding, took him out of the game. That's going to be critical once we get to the main a little bit later on. Brad, do you think it's interesting? We've got Suarez on the outside. We just watched his teammate lose the lead. Yeah. by having that outside position. Elliot Sadler's down on the bottom. Who do you think gets the advantage into one? I'm going to lean towards uh, what we saw in the first race. I think the inside lane has a huge advantage on the initial start, but not on restarts. So we'll have to see. A lot of series regulars starting inside the top 10. They're all thinking about one thing, finishing the top two. Make yourself eligible for the dash for cash. 40 laps at Dover, heat two underway. Green flag is in the air. And Ty Dillon with an aggressive move. Saw that at Richmond. Remember where he jumped yeah. out of line and heat two and got the race lead? Can't do it here, but he's all over Elliott Sadler down the back straightaway. He wants that spot. He wants to be dashed for cash. Oh, wow, what a what a shot down into turn three he takes. It makes it work. Gutsy. Very aggressive, but you know what? You got to have guts to win, and he's got it. <laughs> He's, he's proven that, especially over the last couple of races, Adam. He's been impressive. We saw him run up and almost knock Dale Jr. out of the way at, at Richmond for the win over there. And here he is again, making an amazing move down into the corner. We received word from NASCAR. The start is under review. Let's go back and take a look. And this has been a real talking point. Saw it play out yesterday in the Camping World Truck Series race here. And they're going to get Elliott Sadler, Michael. Looked like Elliott rolled before Suarez did. It is the guy on the inside's responsibility to make sure he doesn't fire his car off before the leader of the race does, and that's what Elliott did, NASCAR deemed. We could look at it again, but I also think Elliott, who was not the control car, beat Suarez to the start-finish line on the initial start, start and they do officiate the opening lap of a heat, just like you do the opening lap of a race. He would have to make a pass-through pass penalty. First car to start -finish line. Yeah, that's it. And you can watch him roll here. He takes off right there and gets a little bit of momentum on Suarez. And then Suarez rolls after that. And then Sadler. The three was pushing me. Tell him to review it, Brent. The three was pushing me, knocking the hell out of me. And that's exactly what I was trying to circle. He got a push from the three car, which somewhat arbitrarily moved him up. But, you know, NASCAR, I don't know if they're going to see that or not. He mentioned Brett. And that's his spotter, Brett Griffin. He played such a big role when Elliott won a couple of weeks ago at Talladega, Michael. Well, just think about the, 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 the roller coaster ride that being a race car driver is. The last time Brett Griffin gave Elliott news, it was that he won the race at Talladega. Today, it's that he's being black flagged. So he's definitely going to get a push here from the three car, but he also rolls a little bit early here on the 19. Gosh, you know, it's hard to say on this one, guys. 
but he definitely beat him to the start finish line. And they tell you in the driver's meeting, you cannot, cannot beat, beat the him. control car to the start finish line. It's black and white. It looks like Elliott checked up a little bit because the three car did push him. And gosh, you know, that's a tough one to be in if you're NASCAR to make that call. And Elliott Sadler's going to get the bad end of it. But, uh, you know, sometimes you have ball and strike calls in sports. Knocking the crap out of me all the way down the front stretch, and it's my fault. Now, here's the good news for Elliott Sadler. He's going to lose a lap here. But once we start the main, everybody is at a level playing field. So it's not as if he's going to start the main one lap down. And if we could get a caution, who knows, maybe get the free pass and have an opportunity to make up some ground here. But already almost a fourth of the way through this second heat and Elliott Sadler squarely behind the eight ball. Daniel Suarez, who started on pole, chose the outside lane, is the leader. Ty Dillon is second. They are the two drivers as of now that would move on, be eligible for the dash for cash. Then it's Matt Tim. Ryan Sieg and Brendan gone, the top five. Wow, we've had a lot of drama in these first two heats, guys. We've got passes for the lead. We've got black flags and under review on starts. There's a lot going on here. And, and one thing that Suarez doesn't want going on, any battle for the lead. Wow, has he driven off. That car is fast. Could today be the day for that young man? 13 drivers have gotten their first career win at this track, including... Michael Waltrip, Daniel Suarez perhaps could do it later on. He leads 10 laps complete in Heat 2. The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Cialis. Fifteen laps complete of the 40 that make up Heat 2 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series here in Dover, Delaware. Daniel Suarez leads. Ty Dillon is second, but he's got some company from the third of our Joe Gibbs cars. That would be Matt Tiff driving the 18, trying to move into the runner-up position. A lot of conversation about Elliott Sadler. Qualified up front, three laps down, had the pass-through because of the violation at the start, was speeding on his pass-through penalty. Right now, Sadler in the 17th position. What did you see there at the start, Larry McReynolds? Well, what I want to try to do is clear this up because the initial start of the race in any restart, they are ruled differently. The start-finish line is exactly what it is. It starts the race and it finishes the race. That's the two significant moments that that line right there at the flag stand plays. On any restarts, you go back to the restart box coming off turn four. And once you enter the restart box, the leader anytime in that box starts the race and whoever's second 
cannot beat the leader outside to the outer line of the restart box. But you saw right there, regardless of what happened in the restart box, who was pushing who, the pole man is supposed to lead the race at the start finish line at the wave of the initial green flag. Basically, the flagman controls the start of the race. The race leader, the control car, controls the restarts. That's why we have the restart zone. And, and that's why, quite honestly, as Larry said, it's okay on a restart for the guy running second to be able to beat the leader of the start finish line based on what happens in that restart zone. As long as he doesn't beat him in the restart box on the restarts, yes, he can always beat him to the start finish line. What gets really tough is I saw while I was watching this, the 19 car did slip up a little bit when he went to launch on his start. And, and maybe that's what got the one car in front of him or maybe the one car went a little bit early. Very, very tough to tell. But the rule is very simple. You cannot beat him to the line. And whether you get a push or that guy spins his tires, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about rules on the restarts and starts. And the reason why that is, if you're watching home thinking, why do they have to be so complicated? It's because the competitors are that tough. They yeah. try to get any advantage they possibly can. You've got to control control these starts and that was, that's what NASCAR does and they do a great job of policing it. Halfway home in heat two, so far so good for Matt Tiff, Chris. Yeah, Matt Tiff, his third weekend in the 18 car. He's had two good runs in it, ran right near the front, led 21 laps at Talladega, but just didn't get the results he wanted, hoping to change that this weekend. This is his first weekend in the Xfinity Series here at Dover. He said the biggest challenge in the race is going to be starts and restarts, just having the confidence in the car as he runs off into turn one. And he watched his teammate, Eric Jones, grab the lead by going up high. We watched Tiff catch off, or Ty Dillon by running right down on the bottom of the racetrack. But now he's trying to vary his line and see if he can make the move around him. Yeah, we're seeing in this heat, the cars are a lot lower on the racetrack. And maybe the top line doesn't have as much speed or they just haven't quite picked it up yet. Hard to say. I'll say this, too, and, and this is what, what's great about this format. One. It gives you 40 laps, at least uh, when you look at how it's set up today based on the rules. 40 laps to go out, find out where your vehicle is so you know what kind of adjustments you want to make for the main. But as a driver, as I said in Heat 1, you really find the balance of your options on track so you know what your approach needs to be mm -hmm. once we go green in that main. You know, it's, it's just impressive to see these young racers take to this big monster like they do. Daniel Suarez has limited NASCAR experience. He's out there leading. Ty Dillon second. And, and this guy, Ryan C, he just continues to impress. Running solidly up in the fourth position with his family-owned team. They do such a great job. I'm so impressed with this young man and the way he's able to wheel that 39 car here at Dover. One slip by Suarez or Dillon. And Ryan C could put himself in dash for cash position. What would $100,000 mean to that race team? Well, I can tell you that, you know, I started out with a family race team, and I know that feeling where every dollar counts. Believe me, they put every dollar they make into the race car. And, and what it means is you'll be more competitive in more weeks, in future weeks. And, and that can be a huge thing for you. That's all this team wants to do. They want to go out and have great days, run up front, and, and who knows, maybe they can catch some breaks and get a win one day. Oh, you know, we got a crash. Big crash, front straightaway. That's down, Justin down, Marks. Down. First time this season we've seen a caution in one of our heats. He was running the sixth the spot. Yard, wow, you could hear the thud yeah. from up here. Gosh. All right, step forward. Just take your time here. You could hear he was out of breath after that huge crash on the front straightaway. Reminder to everyone, you crash in your heat, you cannot go to a backup car. It looked like he got a little high on the racetrack and it snapped on him here, Michael. Oh, sideways. And watch it hit that inside wall so oh, hard. Looked thank, a little bit like Jeff Burton yesterday in practice. Thank goodness we have safer barriers down there. You just can't appreciate how hard a hit that is. And there's no safer barrier there after he tangles with that outside wall. That's that's hard. He contact. hit the inside wall a lot faster and at worse of an angle. And you can see the car wasn't as tore up until it hit the outside wall without a safer barrier. That's how much of a difference the safer barrier makes, folks. That's a huge, huge difference. Thankfully, he hit the safer barrier on the driver's side and he hit the hard wall uh, more with the front end of the car. And that styrofoam there, that cushions the blow, Adam. That wall moves back and it takes all the energy away from the driver and absorbs it into the uh, styrofoam there. When he hit that concrete wall on the outside, it went right to him. 13 laps to go in heat two. Suarez, Ty Dillon, Matt Tift up front were under caution at Dover.
Under caution at Dover, not sure if you caught it there, but that was Justin Marks climbing into the ambulance. Took him some time to get out of the car because it was pinned against the inside wall. And he appears to be fine. He'll take that mandatory ride to the infield care center. Let's go back and see exactly what brought out the yellow flag. He just gets loose up off turn four. Is that what you see, Brad? Just yeah, it looks like he just got loose. He, he comes out and hits the inside wall, probably loses control of the car steering and brakes, and it comes up and hits the outside wall even harder. Watch this impact. Watch this car just get tore all to pieces. Wow, that's violent. He hit hard enough where the splitter literally tore off the car and is stuck underneath the wall here. They're working on the racetrack right now. Like we said, it took him a little bit of time, but they were finally able to create some space between the wall and that car to allow Justin to climb out. He was running sixth when the incident happened off of turn four, Chris. And Adam, you saw the back end of the car jump out from underneath him. That's really what he's been struggling with from the drop of the green. He's been saying that that car is just so loose this entire 27 laps that he ran out there. His first Xfinity start here. So he's just uh, struggled the entire time. Finally just got away from him. Look at the damage to that 42 car. Larry, they're fixing the wall there. These team, that team cannot go to a backup car. What other rules uh, are different here in the Dash for Cash races? Well, I think it's a great time for us to explain them because as Adam said, this is the first time we've had a caution during a heat race. Now let's talk about the drivers on the racetrack right now with this caution out. They could pit and make adjustments, but you cannot pit in the heat race and change tires. They, you have to start the heat and finish the heat on the same tires. But as far as like Mike Shiplett and the crew chief of that 42 car, I don't think that car is fixable, but let's just say they wanted to fix it. And to your point, Michael, they cannot go to a backup car because they almost treat the heats and the main like one race. They can work on that car until the checkered flag of this heat. And then it's like we go into red flag condition and they could not resume work on that car until they basically say driver start your engine for the feature and they could join the feature at lap 50 at lap 100 they could join it with five laps to go because really they try to treat the the heats and the feature it's just one continuous race and we've stayed under caution no red flag yet as they work on the track and a reminder of this as well no overtime in the heat so we could very well be looking at nine laps to the checkers and being done with heat two
The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. Today it's Dash for Cash for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Tomorrow, round 12 for Sprint Cup teams. The action presented by Drive for Autism. And you can watch it 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's when we get it going. FS1 tomorrow, or as always, just check it out live at Fox Sports Go. And these Cup guys are going faster than they've ever gone at Dover. And they got less spoiler than they ever had. Brad, you guys are going to be crazy tomorrow. Oh, yes. And, you know, Dover's a crazy race. Look at, speaking about crazy, they cut the splitter out of the wall so we can get back to green here with, it uh, looks like, about four or five laps left. And uh, that's good. Yeah, let's go. We always love having you up here with us. Uh, what, what's going on with the foundation right now, Brad? Oh, well, we're glad to be here, and uh, I really enjoy being in the booth for these races, and I really enjoy my foundation, which you can learn more about, uh, bradracing.com slash foundation. Uh, we do a lot of things with veterans. We have some great grants and uh, uh, new proposals that are coming up, about ready to announce, and we're very, very excited about and appreciate all of our support that we get from the community and those fans and folks watching at home. Man, I love your appreciation for the military, the vets, how you carry that American flag when you win Thank races, you. And, and what all you do for the veterans. Thank you, Brad, for your heart it. and all that you do. Thank you. Little shootout here. This is big. You got the restart box. We can't jump. Uh, the, the the control car, which is Suarez, has to go first. Ty Dillon's going to have to be careful that he doesn't violate that. You right. know what I'm watching, though, Michael? This guy right here. Talk about the underdog story. 39 car is in a great spot to get that second place to make for the dash for cash. They're, They're in the, in the zone. restart zone. And Daniel Suarez, the control car. Here we go. Five to go at the line. I don't know if they'll look at it, but a heck of a jump by Ty Dillon on this restart. I think Ty might get him. He's got him. Cleared him. And look behind him. Here comes Sieg on the outside of Tift. He's going to try to sniff out $100,000. Got up to third. Four laps to go, and they come back around. Ty Dillon trying to win the heat, advance on, and run for the $100,000. But we understand this restart once again under review. Oh Elliot my Sandler gosh. penalized to start this heat. Let's look at it. What do you guys think? They're all under review, Adam. <laughs> We've got to watch them all because these drivers want it so bad. It's really close here, guys. I, I don't it's know just, if you can tell. It's just tough to tell. When we had the... Uh, truck series infractions we had in car audio that we could see who did what we'll have to just study this video and i know if i know if he does get penalized ryan sieg will step into the step into the position to run for a hundred thousand dollars and while all that's going on don't forget daniel suarez just wants to pass die on back and he's right there oh loose too did you see him wiggle down into turn three starting to move it up the track now, Ty Dillon obviously beat Daniel Suarez to the start-finish line, but as we talked about earlier, within the race, there is no rule against the number two starting car beating the race leader or the control car to the start-finish line. It all is determined based on a penalty on what happens in that restart zone. Yeah, the leader has to break first. That's simply the rule. After that, the leader could spin his tires. The guy on the inside could get a push and get to the line first. That's okay. There's only one rule. The leader has to start first and NASCAR must have deemed that that happened we haven't heard any more about the review I think they're still trying to gather audio and and video information to make a decision but right now it looks like Ty Dillon is going to win this second heat yep white flag was out last time here they come off turn four to the checkers Ty Dillon Daniel Suarez won two and as they cross the start finish line we get confirmation from NASCAR the restart was good so those two drivers dash for cash eligible joining Justin Allgaier and Eric Jones who were one two in our opening heat of the day another second place finish for Daniel Suarez <laughs> you just got to believe that's eating him up but if he keeps running like he has been he'll get that win there they are the drivers that will run for the cash later today at Dover. Justin Allgaier, Eric Jones, Ty Dillon, both who have already won $100,000 this season, and Daniel Suarez, who's looking to pad his pockets as well.
The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Ford. We go further so you can. By Budweiser, not backing down since 1876. This Bud's for you. And by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Welcome back to Dover as we get set for the 120 lap main event. The results from heat number two. And remember, if Ty Dillon can win that dash for cash, that would be two. It's like a win puts him in the chase. I'd love $200,000. He won his first cool hundred grand. Ty Dillon did at Richmond. Let's recap heat one and heat two as we get set for the main dash for cash heat one. It's Junior Motorsports versus Joe Gibbs Racing. In the 20, it's Eric Jones who dominated alongside Justin Allgaier. They trade the lead back and forth. In the end, Allgaier holds out. He's eligible for the dash for cash and gets the win. Ty Dillon in the three, heat number two versus Daniel Suarez. But then, Larry, we had a caution. We'll show you here the 42 of Justin Marks brought out the first caution we've seen in these Dash for Cash heat races. Oh, and it was a bad one. Got loose up off turn four, self-cleaning track. He goes to the bottom, hits the inside wall, and then comes up and hits the outside wall very hard. Luckily, Justin Marks was okay. When we went back, here's the final restart. 40 lap heat here. The restart zone, the control car is Daniel Suarez on the outside. And it was about as close as you could call it right there. But let's take a look at the onboard. I think that maybe tells the tale a little bit more. We're riding with Daniel Suarez on the outside and they're in the restart box. It, it just, it was so close, but Ty Dillon, NASCAR deemed it was a good restart, and Ty Dillon led the last six laps to win the race. Man, Daniel Suarez was so close to winning the Camping World Truck Series race last night. Also has to settle for second. But we still have the main event. First, though, Jamie Little standing by with Justin Marks. Well, that was certainly a big hit. He told me the second one was much bigger. I'm glad you're okay, but what exactly happened there? Uh, Katera Chevrolet was really, really loose in that heat. I was kind of just trying to hang on to it and wait till we could put some adjustments on it for the main. So um, just kind of couldn't hang on to it for the whole race. And I hate it for the guys. Um, it, was a, it was a pretty big hit and the car's junk. Um, I hate they came all this way and we don't really get the race today. Um, I was thinking the whole time, I, I didn't really know what the rule was. I don't know if we could unload it back up and start at the back or if we had to fix this one. I don't know, but it sounds like we're done for the day. So it's a shame. I hate it for the guys. Thank, thanks for their effort and everything. And, just too bad. All right, we'll see Justin back in the car in a month at Michigan. All right, Jamie, thanks so much. Justin Marks never raced at Dover in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Glad to see he's okay. We set you up for the main event next.
Tomorrow, immediately following the Sprint Cup Series race on FS1, the high horsepower action continues. NHRA drag racing from Atlanta. So far, it's been a year of the woman, or should I say women? Brittany Force currently leads top fuel. Sister Courtney tied for the lead in Funny Car. I love it. Hashtag girl power. The 36th annual Summit Racing Southern Nationals this Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern only on FS1. Back here for Xfinity Series Racing at Dover, Delaware. Crews working hard on the surface and the, the wall itself, Larry McReynolds, after a tough hit from Justin Marks in heat number two. Well, the biggest thing they need to work on that wall right there, it should be a safer barrier. We've got to get safer barriers in place at this racetrack. Similar point on the racetrack where we saw Sprint Cup Series drivers having trouble during Friday's practice. No safer barriers there. More coverage next. The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Colonel quality guaranteed. It's our 10th race of the NASCAR Xfinity Series season from Dover, Delaware, moments away from the 120 lap main event. Let's go downstairs now. Chris Neville standing by with winner from heat number two. And Ty Dillon grabs the win in his heat. And Ty, it was a great late race restart there. You have a good 40-lap car. How do you feel about the car over 120 laps? I feel really good. I felt like we didn't really fire off that great um, in, that, in that heat race. But right at the end, we started running back down before the caution came out. And I felt like we have a good long run car. Obviously, it showed there. But uh, Reem Chevy's been driving real good. It's kind of pick your poise. You want to be good on the long run or you want to be good, good on the short run? I think we know what we need to do to make sure we can uh, get up there and be good on a short run at the end of the race if we have to. But uh, we're going to kind of go with a long run strategy. And uh, it's cool to be locked into the Xfinity Dash for Cash again. It's uh, so much fun to do these heat races. I love them. Yeah, I see them as an opportunity uh, to go out there and put yourself in a good position, get a starting position, and a good position to win 100 grand. And uh, today we can lock ourselves into the chase too. So we're going to try and get that done. And I think it's going to take a win. Justin's been really good. So uh, I think we got the Reem Chevy to do it. Ty Dillon looking for that second big check. Matt. And Daniel Suarez grabbed the last dash for cash spot. What happened on that restart, Daniel? It was just super slippery for me. Uh, I don't know why. For some reason, I'm not sure if I, I didn't do a, a good job cleaning all my tires or 
or something because I, I feel like I was spinning my tires forever uh, until the 39 came to came to give me a good push that that helped me to you know to keep up with the tree but but before that I was just losing ground a lot and for some reason the first lap after the restart I didn't have any grip at all so I don't know maybe I have to do a better job with that cleaning up my tires and move from there Daniel all right, Matt, thanks so much. Justin Allgaier, Ty Dillon, Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez. Who are you putting your money on? One of those four gentlemen will walk away with a cool hundred grand. The Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. By Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We all know here at Dover, it's called the Monster Mile, and we all know about Miles the Monster. And if you can compare this track to any other monster there is, how about the, the Incredible Hulk? Maybe the Hulk. I think it's big. In that most like Miles the Monster, just reach out and smack you if, if you misbehave a little bit. Maybe like Jeepers Creepers because it just keeps like hitting you and spinning you back out. There's nowhere to go run and hide at this racetrack. If he gets his hands on you, you're in trouble. The Monster Mile. This weekend living up to its reputation and nickname. 240 lap heats are complete. It's time for the 120 lap main. Four drivers going for $100,000. Justin Allgaier, Ty Dillon, Eric Jones, and Daniel Suarez. And for Ty Dillon, if he gets the cash, he'll put himself in the chase. It's about to go down. Let's go trackside. Get the command to fire engines here at Dover International Speedway. And now for those most famous words in motorsports, please welcome the Vice President of Marketing and Advertising for Ollie's Bargain Outlet, Mr. Dan Haynes. Drivers, start your engines! It's round three in the Dash for Cash for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Happy to have you along on a cloudy Saturday afternoon here at Dover International Speedway with Michael Walter, Brad Keselowski. I'm Adam Alexander. 120 laps in the Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200. Aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear. Superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and on the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. 
A lot of conversation today. Some penalties issued when you talk about the restarts and starts of these events. You get a penalty here in the main, not much time to make up the ground. Let's go from the driver's seat. Ryan Reed going to have to make up some ground as we get the green flag today, Michael. Hey, Ryan, it's Michael up in the Fox Sports booth again. Do you hear us? But uh, got a little ground to make up there. Can you charge to the front from the middle of the pack? Yeah, man, I'm hoping so. Uh, we were really, really loose to start our heat race there. So the guys did what I asked for. They gave me some more turn uh, in the center, but we just went a little too far. So I uh, tried to dial a little bit more rear grip back into it. And uh, we'll see. You know, uh, the guys have been working hard. and. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting going here. Uh, the track probably picked up a little bit of grip uh, since the sun's went away a little bit. And so uh, hopefully the rain stays away and we can go out there and have some more fun. 10-4 on that. Ryan, what are you thinking? You're starting 15th here in the main, and you've got those adjustments in the car. How do you think you're going to run the top? You're going to run the bottom? How are you going to pass those cars to get to the front? Yeah, I mean, I'm watching the second heat race, some guys are really making it work uh, all the way at the top. So it uh, seems like you kind of got to pick one or the other. The middle's not working so great. I tried that in my heat. I didn't really like it. So I'm either going to be uh, right along the bottom or all the way at the top uh, with my right sides and kind of the gray. Uh, seems like there was some grip up there. So I really like the top. And so I'll probably get up there and try it. And hopefully there's some speed up there. And hopefully it dials some more rear grip into it. All right, bud. Thanks. Have a good race. We'll check in with you later and see how you're doing. Thanks, guys. We said it, Ryan Reed rolling off 15th here in our main at Dover. Let's hear from the crew chiefs down on the grid. Some strategy could play out here in this 120 lapper. What's going on, Jamie Little? Well, Jason Burnett is the crew chief for Justin Allgaier. Very fast, was able to move around, seemed to have the best car out there starting on the front row. We do have some weather coming, though. So how do you juggle all of this 120 lap pusher strategy? Well, right now, you know, I think everybody's pit window will be about lap. 30 to 40, you know, we'll be able to make it to the end from there. So I'd say you'll see everybody race to that point, keeping an eye on the weather and seeing how all that plays out. But we'll race, hopefully we get a yellow, you know, around lap 40 or 50, everybody can pit and we'll race to the end. It'd be great to get the win. It'd be great to get the $100,000, Matt. A lot on Chris Gabehart's plate. You heard Eric Jones talk about his concern about the package. Radio communication was an issue in your heat. Also, the weather. What are you focused on most about what you've got the, the most important on your plate? Yeah, we got uh, a few challenges here with the Reese's Toyota Camry, but the guys are doing a good job. We worked on the radios a little bit. Got a plan for that. Worked on the car a little bit. And I feel like we got the best driver for the job. Want to thank Xfinity for the Dash for Cash program. It's really cool. Hopefully, we can get a full race in. But if not, I want to be leading when it rains. Chris? Well, Ty Dillon's crew chief Nick Harrison still not on the pit box. He was supposed to be down here by now, but the team forgot to put fuel in the car. He's been lobbying with NASCAR to try and get fuel put in that car before they rolled. However, they were not allowed to do that, so the team already behind the eight ball. Wow, that could be a huge story. Now, Justin Allgaier is the control car because of the two drivers, he and Ty Dillon, that won the heat earlier today. He qualified best. That's why he gets lane selection here. But his car on the outside is going to be lighter, Brad. He doesn't have fuel in it. He's got fresh tires. He could fire off and go to town. But guys, we've heard talk about the weather. And if you watch the Sprint Cup race from Talladega with weather in the area, everybody racing every lap like it was a last lap. This race is short. These guys are going to have a serious desire to get to the front in a hurry, not knowing when that weather might come. This could be intense. Well, rain and the anticipation of it always paces up the, the race and always makes the drivers push a little bit harder, a little bit earlier in the race. It's already a short race, only 120 laps in this main for the Xfinity Series, but we're going to have even a little more pressure now. Now our forward performance track facts on board here with Joey Logano looking for his fifth win at Dover. Five season sweeps in the last six years. Two of those by Mr. Logano. Nine of the last 16 races here. One from the front row. And Chris mentioned it, Larry. Already some adversity for one of those guys starting up front. Yeah, and just to clarify the rules, all the work after the heat race, whether it's changing the tires, making the adjustments, or fueling the car, has to be done in the garage area. If they pitted right here to fuel, he'd have to be back at the back of the line. So right now, based on the laps he ran in that heat race and qualifying, I'm going to say at best about lap 45 is what he's got in that car as far as fuel. And you heard Jason Burdett down on pit road saying they're hoping for a caution around lap 45 or so. That would be idea for these teams to get to pit road and make that pit stop. He needs it worse than the rest. About time to go green on our 120 lap main. 
the 2016 Toyota Camry XSE leading us around the one mile oval here in Dover, Delaware. Eric Jones won our first dash for cash event at Bristol last month. Picked up the checkered flag and $100,000. Ty Dillon second to Dale Jr. got the big money at Richmond. Who will do it today? Perhaps Justin Allgaier can get it done. All right, boys. That's what we came here for. Appreciate the hard work this weekend and got one in the E-Race. Let's go get ourselves another one in this main. I like his position, especially with that car on the outside that uh, is in the need of fuel. Brad, if you're if you're Ty Dillon, what do you, what are you thinking? Would you tell your team let's pit now and get that gas and no. go to the back? Or you're gonna just <laughs> no, I'm here throw to the win. dice. I'm here to win the dash for cash. I'm not gonna win the dash for cash going to the back. You're not gonna win this race that way. There is not enough laps. He's going for broke. He wants that win. And uh, you know what? I think he's gonna have a little advantage to your point, Michael. He's got a little bit lighter car with brand new tires. He might be uh, able to take the lead here right away and get a yellow early and make up for it. Yeah, it's a car with, with new tires on it and not a lot of gas in it, that's that's an advantage because when you fill up the gas, it weighs more, obviously, and it makes it uh, handle a little bit worse. So it's going to be interesting to watch the start of the race with those factors. The scary part, though, if you're the three team right now, is these cars in the Xfinity Series, if they run out of fuel, they are very, very difficult to refire, and they do not know for certain how much fuel they have in it because we've had heat races, we've had qualifying, very, very tough to calculate how much fuel you've burned. So very easy to run out and if you do it's going to be a huge penalty this team has said we're going for it we're going to roll the dice and hopefully get a caution at the right time that's how we're going to get to victory lane keep an eye too on elliot sadler penalized twice in his heat rolling off in the 32nd position he's got a long way to go to find the front justin allgaier ty dillon on the front row right behind him the other drivers in line for that one hundred thousand dollar prize teammates from joe gibbs racing eric jones daniel suarez the main 120 laps were underway at dover power move outside lane for ty dillon give him the lead Look at Algar slipping up the hill, and that opens the door for Eric Jones and Daniel Suarez on the bottom of the track. Wow. That's the start Justin Algar was hoping for. He was hoping to clear and get the lead right away. Eric Jones came through on board with Daniel Suarez, second year driver out of Mexico, slides into third. Algar from the lead to fourth on the start here in our main. On board with Logano in front of him. The other driver doing double duty this weekend, Paul Menard. Seventh and eighth right now on track are the two and 22, respectively. I thought Paul Menard had a lot of speed. He had that contact in his heat race that maybe held him back, but I think he's got a really good car here. Yeah, and I'm wondering about your teammate in the Sprint Cup Series, Joey Logano, what he can do in that 22 car. He had tremendous long run speed in practice yesterday. Can he rally and get up toward the front? He's won a lot of races here, but I haven't seen it so far today, the ability to drive through the field and get to the lead. From the driver's seat with Ryan Reed, started 15th. That's where he is right now. And a front row seat for a great battle in front of him. Brennan Poole inside of Brendan gone. There's the Lily Diabetes Ford for Reed diving down into turn one. And look at Brendan Gaughan trying to sort out this battle with Brendan Poole. Poole's on the bottom. We know how hard it is to make a pass down there. He's trying to pull it off. How stressful to be side by side here. One of the most stressful places to be side by side is easily Dover. The way the cars come into the corner, very narrow with the track, and then it widens out. It's very easy to get loose on entry and then slide up on exit and run into each other. So this is one of the toughest tracks to run side by side at. 13th on the line here. Brendan gone in front of Brendan Poole in that black and yellow Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing. Give gone the spot. Poole settles in line behind him. Ryan Reed right there and J.J. Yaley in that black and green 44 for TriStar Motorsports trying to get involved. Joey Logano just got around Ryan Sieg down in three and four, and it's opened the door up for the 18 of Matt Tiff and Bubba Wallace in that six car 
to try to take that position away. Looks like Sieg's beginning to fade a bit early in the going here. A lot of fast cars getting by him. He had a great heat race, Michael, but you know what? It, it's just a matter of time. These are some cup-funded cars and teams, and it's so hard to fight those guys off. And you know, if, if I want to sponsor somebody, I, I want to sponsor Ryan Sieg. He's got so much potential. If they can get some better equipment, they had some better engineering support. He's proven he can drive that car awesome. He just needs some more support. Absolutely. Tip looks good in the early going. Scored eight, 12th here yesterday in the Camping World Truck Series race. Mentioned Elliott Sadler started 32nd, up to 12, uh, up 12 positions in eight laps. 20th right now behind Ross Chastain. He's in the red four. That's Drew Herring in the black and yellow 24. Looks like Sadler's going to get to the inside of Chastain. El Elliott's had a really fast car uh, all throughout practice, and in that heat he was solid, so he should be able to march through the field. I know he is at a disadvantage, Brad. We talked about this at the beginning. What does Ty Dillon do? Does he drop back? Elliott Sadler started from the back. Can he rally to the front? And what will happen with Dillon when his tank runs dry? I know what will happen. It'll run out of gas. He won't be able to go anymore. <laughs> but will the caution fall before that happens? Elliott Sadler needs to catch some brakes, but he's also got to make some of his own luck and pass some cars. Whoa, what a move here by Ryan Reed. I thought he said he wasn't going to use the middle, Michael. <laughs> he said his car wasn't any good there. Well, he wasn't shy about taking it there. What a strong he, move. He just passed two cars there. And speaking of making passes, there goes Eric Jones for the race lead inside of Ty Dillon, 20 on point at Dover. Ty Dillon has lost the lead. What's the story on their fuel situation, Chris? Well, Adam, I finally spoke with Ty Dillon's crew chief, Nick Harrison, and he said during that intermission period, there's so much congestion back in the garage. The team was doing their adjustments to the three car. They were filling the three car, and NASCAR asked Ty to pull forward so they could get the cars from heat one out on pit lane. When Ty pulled forward onto pit lane, NASCAR said, you can no longer fuel that car. Now, they did get some fuel in the car. Nick Harrison saying, we think we're pretty close to full. If anything, we think we might be about a gallon short. So obviously they're not half a tank short, but still a gallon short could play into this race. Yeah, but that's certainly good news for that team. I got a text just a bit ago from Mike Dillon, who's uh, Ty's dad. He said, we got some gas in it, so we think we're going to be okay. We can definitely make it into the fuel window, which is what, uh, which is the most important thing here today. Teammates it's battling for fourth. Look at this, guys. Up the hill they go, too. Look how high Algar goes. Yeah, he's in the seven, the red 88. We Alex saw the heat race. That's where he made all the speed and was able to take the lead against Eric Jones. So obviously he thinks uh, that line was working for him and he wants to keep working it. And Brad, I watched during Xfinity practice yesterday, this 88 car, after they get 10 or 15 laps on it, Alex Bowman comes to, to town. That car really starts to pick up speed and you can see he's trying to pass his teammate and get that spot away and he's doing it down on the bottom now. First of nine right starts there. he'll make this year in that 88 machine for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Talented race car driver out of Arizona. Last couple of years in the Sprint Cup Series. There he goes. He makes that pass. Great move by Bowman. The key to making that pass on the bottom is you've got to be able to get up down the straightaway. You've got to be able to clear him before the straightaway uh, to kind of harness that big run that he's going to have. But Justin Algar is not going to just let him have it. He's coming back on the inside. No, and Paul Menard's right there as well. He wants a piece of the action. Yeah, that lap car, Ryan Ellis, at 25, it sort of hindered Bowman's ability to slide through that corner like he hoped to. Now he's got it straight. Ooh. He's going to pull away from this battle. And, and you saw to that point, Justin was not able to clear him before they got to the exit of the straightaway, and, and that gives him such a huge run if you're Alex Bowman. Battle for second. Black and red, three of Ty Dillon. Orange, 19 of Daniel Suarez. We got a flat right rear one. Right side looks good. Left side looks good. It's a handful, Nick. I just be smart with it, man. I can see it. Just be smart with it here. Well, we thought fuel was his problem. He's got worse problems than that. If he thinks he's got a flat tire, that's not going to get any better, Brad. It's just going to get worse and worse. What happened here off turn two? Brandon Jones. And that 33 going in the wrong direction. Tire rub, left front. These are teammates here. Oh, he gets loose, and I bet he slides up into, yes, and put Brandon Jones into the outside wall, and that rubs significant, guys. He'll have to pit. 
had problems early yesterday running the truck race. Talking about the rookie out of Atlanta, Georgia, Brandon Jones, unscheduled pit stop, 20 laps in to the main. And now Joe Gibbs Racing has the lead. They have the runner up spot. Daniel Suarez able to get around Ty Dillon. And here comes Alex Bowman trying to get in the top three. Ty thought he had a flat tire, but I can't tell right now if he's got a flat tire or if his car's just really loose. Look Brandon Jones Bowman. running 11th. That's a great move on the bottom of the track. He grabs that third spot away. That car is hooked up. So Brandon Jones making his pit stop was 11th when the problem happened on track. Contact with Ryan Reed. And you said it, Michael. I mean, uh, around Ty Dillon, and Alex Bowman appears to be faster right now than Daniel Suarez. He may be hunting the lead before too long. That's impressive. A kid that doesn't get to race very often, he hops behind the wheel of Dale Jr.'s car, and he is driving it like Dale Jr. did at <laughs> Richmond. He's taking it to the front. It's got to be tough. H haven't been in a car in a while. Haven't driven an Xfinity car this season to come to a track like this and compete like he is. Very impressive for Alex Bowman. That's what you got to do as a driver. When you have limited opportunities, you have to capitalize on them, and that's what he's doing today. You know, when we interviewed him before qualifying, before, before the race got started today, he said the word thankful about four times. He just loves the fact that he gets to drive a car, a quality car like one from Junior Motorsports, and he's taking advantage of that opportunity, that's for sure. Nearly won driving for Dale Jr. at Phoenix a couple of years ago. That's where the relationship began, ran at Charlotte and Phoenix end of 2014. That 88 car already has two wins this year, you know, Chase Elliott at Daytona and then Dell Jr. At, at Richmond. So the 88's a fast ride and he's taking advantage of that. Now that'd make you feel good, right? If, if Chase Elliott had won in the car, Dell Jr. wins in the car and you're Alex Bowman and, and you go take it to victory lane? <laughs> when you're the crew chief, that just makes you beat your chest a little bit. So <laughs> I can win with any driver. It's my setups, but uh, it's also a testament to great driving as well. Crew Chief Dave Ellens might be a little nervous on the pit box right now. Things getting tight in that runner-up position as both Suarez and, and Bowman close in on lap traffic. And behind them, the battle for fifth. Paul Menard, Justin Allgaier left to your screen. That's what's so great about this Dover track. I know it's the monster and it's tough, but it also widens out and the groove goes up the hill. So you can see good side-by-side -side battles all over the track. And that's what we're having right now with Menard and Allgaier on the left of the screen. And then Bowman trying to figure out how to get up on Suarez on the right. And all this racing, opening the door for Eric Jones to distance himself. His advantage over second place, 3.3 seconds. What's going on with Justin Allgaier at this stage, Matt? On the left side of your screen now, the driver, the seven Allgaier and his spotter. They've been talking like several other drivers have. His car is on the tight side. Also, the track is really starting to take rubber. You're now starting to see different drivers move around to try to help the balance of their race car. Starting to think about adjustments, what we're going to do when we come to pit road. I think we'll get four tires on this initial stop, Brad. And we saw two tires work on the truck series yesterday for a while. They faded at the end, but maybe some strategy. Does anybody dare take two to try to get up front? Well, one guy I'm looking at right now is Darrell Wallace. He doesn't want anything to change right now because he is driving up and catching a lot of cars. He's the second fastest car on the track. I think he can easily pass these next three cars. He's got maybe something for Eric Jones. Fourth to seventh on track. This is outstanding. Ty Dillon, Justin Allgaier going underneath him. Paul Menard waiting in line. And right behind him, Darrell Wallace Jr. Outstanding things from him in a backup car, Jamie. Absolutely. The weekend couldn't have gone worse for him to start out on Friday. But after his heat race today, he said, I think we're in great shape. We actually started out tighter than most. So our car held on longer. That's exactly what you're seeing here. They tightened it up, and now we've already gained four positions going forward. Remember how his weekend started at Daytona? Five minutes into practice, he crashes. He takes his backup car and battles for the win. Gets a good solid top 10 finish. The same story seems to be developing here in Delaware. That's not how you want to get top tens. Go to a backup five minutes into practice. But Darrell Wallace Jr. able to battle through some tough times here at the Monster Mile. Looks good at, at a track where, quite honestly, he's been at his best over the years, both in the Camping World Truck Series and here 
in NASCAR Xfinity Series competition. But Adam and Michael, that is a key part to being a great driver, is to be able to overcome adversity. That's what it takes to make it to the next level of the Sprint Cup Series, and that's what owners are looking for right now when they're watching this race. Can you overcome adversity? Just like this guy, penalized in his heat. He was three laps down after a couple of issues. Started 32nd, and here he is trying to get in the top 10. Elliott Sadler with a great effort. And you, know, you talked about, Michael, what teams are going to try different strategies. I would not be surprised one bit to see the one car of Elliott Sadler and his team try some kind of alternate strategy to make up for that track position shortage they had at the start of the race. With this relatively short race, only 120 laps, you're going to have a couple of opportunities for a differing strategy. Maybe get two at the first stop or, or four later. There's going to be an opportunity to do something different than the leaders. And when you give up as much as Elliott Sadler did, that's what it's going to take to get all the way to the front. Obviously, a really fast one main car. Eric Jones in some lap traffic. His advantage over second place Alex Bowman, 2.7 seconds. Daniel Suarez is third, nearly five seconds behind. Then it's Justin Allgaier and Paul Menard. All four of our drivers running for the dash for cash inside the top seven. Worst of those, Ty Dillon. Suarez and Allgaier, I mentioned third and fourth. And Eric Jones out front and taking care of business. He's led 23 of our 34 laps, 86 to go at the Monster Mile. And, and we've reached that stage now where if we would get a caution, these drivers would be in their window to pit and be done. And we have seen a lot of long green flag runs here in recent years. Suarez beginning to fade now. Bowman around him up to the second spot. And here comes Algar. It was interesting. Justin's car did not take off well at the start of this race, but he's rallied. Over the last 10 or 15 laps, Larry, looks like Algar's car has come to life. What are you thinking about all this strategy Brad and I are discussing? Yeah, I mean, I have been listening intently, and I just think with it would be a short-term gain. I totally agree that Elliott Sadler, that, that would be something that they would be lured into doing because of trying to make up track position. But I just think because this race has that long green flag look, I think if you come to pit road, whether it's under caution now, or especially if we go to a green flag stop, you're gonna have to get four Goodyear tires. And, and I guess my question, Brad, for you would be this. We're seeing these drivers that appear they're set up for the long haul. How much of that is how you set up the machine versus the way the guy is driving it to manage over a long green flag run? That's a great question, Adam. And I would say it's a little bit different week to week. You look at some tracks uh, like Dover where the driver doesn't have as much control over the long run speed. Uh, the tracks where a driver does have a lot of control over the long run speed would be like a Richmond or those tracks where you have to be easy with the brakes or take care of the rear tires up out of the acceleration zone, how much you spin them. But Dover, I think, this particular weekend, it's mostly on the crew chiefs to have that long run speed. The car setup. I thought today might be the day for Daniel Suarez, but right now, back in the sixth position, Matt, and the lap times aren't where they need to be. And you're seeing him bobble just a couple of times, or we've been on board with Suarez for a couple of laps, and you've seen him move around his line. He was right down on the very bottom, then he moved up to the middle. His car, like his heat race, has swung to the free side and getting worse, trying to move around to see if he can improve it in any way until the first pit stop. That car just looks like he's really loose. Look at all the input he's got in the steering wheel. Drivers have different driving styles, but that's a lot more input than we generally see out of Daniel. And, and Brad, I think that's a great point. You said the crew chiefs have to have the setup just right here at Dover. The speeds are so high. A driver can only make up for so much. What's interesting, I think, guys, are the, the cars that are fading. And we're seeing guys that started in the back starting to charge toward the front. This is a great part of the race to see whose long run speed can get them in a position to win this race. I thought Darrell Wallace uh, and Jamie Little said it the best. Long run speed, uh, we talked about how much looser the cars get over the course of a run. Uh, and sometimes you need to start off a run tight to, to make up for that with the balance of the car. So what does that mean? You need the front end to have a little bit less grip at the start of the run, slide the nose a little bit, and as the tires wear down, get a little bit hotter, the rear end loses grip, the car catches up to a neutral balance, and then you'll have that speed over the long run. Eric Jones leads this race, but he's going to have company last time by by two tenths of a second. Alex Bowman was the fastest guy in town. He's coming. At one point, the advantage for Jones was three and a half seconds. Now two seconds in front of Alex Bowman. We're closing on halfway in the main here at the Monster Mile. Excuse me.
tell you what, of all the pit roads that we have on the NASCAR circuit, Dover is probably the toughest. The entrance to pit road is really tricky. You got to be a little bit more cautious to, to not make mistakes here. Make sure you stay on your fundamentals. Make sure you, you hit pit road speed, get in your box clean, stop on your side. I think it's better to make sure you do everything right here and not make mistakes. You definitely can lose the race here on pit road. It makes it very, very important. Everybody has to be on their P's and Q's when it's time to come down pit road for a pit stop. One year ago in this race, 11 pit road speeding penalties. You can't have a middle air and then have success at Dover. Too difficult to overcome. Look at Alex Bowman out front. He was 2.8 seconds behind Eric Jones. And in six laps, he has put himself to the top of the scoring pylon. Eric Jones was just really struggling with lap traffic here. And Alex Bowman just used that to his advantage, caught right up to him and was able to, to get by him very you know, quickly. You know, we interviewed Jones after his heat where he was really competitive, looked really fast, and he said, our balance is simply terrible. We don't have a chance if we can't do something about our balance. We hope we can make the changes to get it better. Well, obviously, that balance has reared its ugly head because he can't go anywhere in traffic, and around goes Bowman. What a run by Alex Bowman. But Bowman not exactly pulling away now that he's got the race lead. The advantage right around a half a second. It's teetering there, four tenths, six tenths each lap. So we'll continue to keep an eye on Eric Jones. Meanwhile, what a storyline it would be for Alex Bowman to come here and win in that 88, Matt. And Brad Keselowski, you've been in Alex Bowman's shoes, getting an opportunity, trying to make the most of it to solidify yourself with this team or another team for the future. Right now, this is the car a little bit on the tight side, but he is loving it. He's yarding the competition competition right now. I go back to 2009 when that 88 car won here. Guy driving for Dell Jr. named Brad <laughs> Keselowski. <laughs> that was a heck of a day. And uh, like I said uh, at the start of the telecast, to win at Dover, you feel like you've really tackled the monster. And she'll bite you enough in your life. You want to bite her back there. You know, uh, I go back to dinner last night when Dell Jr. said, we've got some good cars. We're going to be strong tomorrow. And Alex Bowman is a talented young racer. People are going to hear a lot out of him. Well, that certainly seems to be the case. What's the difference with Eric Jones here 54 laps in? And I said Bowman wasn't pulling away. He's starting to put some distance between himself and Eric Jones. The advantage, 1.2 seconds. I think, you know, what we saw in the heat race and what we saw at the start of this race was that Alex Bowman didn't have a lot of speed for 10 to 15 laps, and then his car has taken off, and he has a lot of long run speed. So going back to the crew chief, they have a setup in that car that has tremendous long run speed, not a lot of short run speed, and Eric Jones' car is just the opposite. So I think what's really going to dictate the outcome of this race is do we see a long run or a short run to end this race? If it's a long run, I think Bowman is in really good shape. But a short run, watch out. I think Eric Jones will be back. Look at Elliott Sadler. He's finally cracked the top ten. Now he's driving around Joey Logano. They're working around the lap car of Ross Chastain just up ahead. But that one main car for Elliott Sadler is really starting to pick up the pace. And, Michael, you said it. He just went around Joey Logano, the guy that's won here four times, now ninth, Chris. Yeah, so much success here and not having the day he was hoping. Talking with his crew chief, Brian Wilson, yesterday, he was pretty bullish about the weekend, thinking back to Texas and some of the things that Brian Wilson and Brad Keselowski will learn that weekend, hoping to bring it here mechanically, hoping that the car was going to have much better balance. But Joey Logano just saying that car is way too nervous as he enters the corner and too loose getting off the corner. So looking to make some big adjustments on this first stop. Long green flag run to start this 120 lap main. Only 13 cars remain on the lead lap. Couple of laps away from the halfway point. Look at Elliott Sadler. Michael talked about his run from 32nd to 8th. Justin Allgaier is third. Alex Bowman in the race lead. Junior Motorsports has won the last two races. Three of the nine this season, they're strong. Meanwhile, Ryan Reed from the driver's seat, two laps down, trying to find his way. Entered the weekend, plus 35 over the cut line, 10th in our chase standings. A definitely goal is to continue to get points, stay inside the top 12, and, and be, put ourselves in a position to make the chase regardless if we have a win or not. Racing in the Xfinity Series with Lily Diabetes and American Diabetes Association 
as partners and, and a goal week in and week out, not only to go out there and race, uh, but to also try and make a difference in the diabetes world and, and continue to uh, for me to chase my dreams and, and show people that they can, um, you know, by working with their doctors, they can go out there and, and chase their dreams. Talk about a driver that has a true connection with their sponsor, Ryan Reed, Lilly Diabetes. A number of years ago, Ryan diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, told he would never race again. He refused to believe that. Came back, now competing at a high level in NASCAR, won the season opener last year at Daytona. Today, not going as he would have hoped, but certainly great to see him out competing here in the Xfinity Series. You saw that contact earlier in the race, and it's definitely torn up the right rear quarter panel on this car. And that, that right rear quarter panel is like a sail in the wind. It, it holds the car into the track and, and keeps it uh, where you want to be and gives it a lot of speed. So when that panel is damaged, it's a bad day, bad news. Past halfway, so should we get rain, NASCAR could deem this race official. What are they saying about the forecast in the Paul Menard camp? He's fourth. I like live weather reports. The crew's confident that in 30 minutes we're going to have some rain, so that means Paul Menard has all the information he needs to, to get all he can out of that two car. But I'm telling you, that pit stop that looms could be key. We've talked about how difficult this pit road is. We know how important a fast crew is. We could see the complexion of this whole race change over the next 20 minutes, and the rain's still 30 out. Brad, you want to be our guest meteorologist here? What do you see? We're going to get this thing wrapped up before the rain hits? I don't know. DW <laughs> keeps trying to tell me about the vortex theory and how it buys you a little bit of time. I guess we're going to find out. If we stay green, we're going to be fine based on that 30-minute estimate. It's if we get a caution along cleanup where things could become a, a big-time question mark. The last thing Alex Bowman wants to see is a caution. Great on the long run. One second advantage over second place Eric Jones. And it won't be long before these guys are going to have to make a pit stop. But and remember, it's been a while since Bowman's even been in a race car. We talk about how tough this pit road is. He's got to execute perfectly if he's going to go to victory lane. Any mistake on pit road, either entering or exiting, could mean no victory for that team. That's a lot of pressure. Oh, it's I haven't tons. been in a car for a number of weeks, and I got to do a green flag pit stop at the hardest track in NASCAR to do a green flag pit stop but just imagine, while leading the race. Just imagine how confident that young man is. He's driven through the field past the best. The Gibbs car has been dominant in 2016. He took his car right around those Toyotas, and now that Chevy's out front. That's a great job by Junior Motorsports and that young man behind the wheel. And look at this. He's about to lap. Ty Dillon, who started on the front row, led the early laps. That tells you folks at home how much this race can change, long run to short run, and how your car is handling. That could be the start of, of regularly scheduled pit stops a little bit early for Ross Chastain as he brings his watermelon car to the pits to get tires and gas. Let's talk about making green flag pit stops. It's not easy to manage lap traffic either, and Brad, you talked about it. Ty Dillon right in front of him. Brennan Poole is there. Drivers that are going to raise him hard to stay on the lead lap. How this fun. is 12th and 11th place, so he's almost lapped up to top 10. How fun is the Xfinity Series? By the way, Ty Dillon, uh, you won the 100 grand over Richmond, but on about lap 70 or so, Alex Bowman's going to come up to lap you. You better throw it in gear and get on out of there because that kid is on a mission. You never know who's going to step up. 50 laps to go here for the NASCAR Mark Xfinity Series. Caution's out, and that gives us an opportunity to remind you tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on FS1. It's race 12 for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. 400 laps here at the Monster Mile. Debris on track brings out our first caution. It's like a part of a tire. That might be a tire issue, for, or maybe that's just a brake hose. What do you see, Brad? It, it look, could be either one of those, and it's... Uh, Somewhat on the racetrack. G good news for Ty Dillon, Brennan Poole. They stay on the lead lap. First car one lap down. Based on our scoring monitor, J.J. Yaley, who would get the free pass. I saw the uh, I saw the 14 car of Jeff Green, the Owensboro, Kentucky native, slow on the track, and then that debris. Maybe those two were related. This is what it's all. This is the money stop. We know we've only got less than 50 laps to go. These guys probably won't come to pit road again. It's do or die here. Keep an eye on this team. On, I mean, Elliott Sadler, 32nd to 8th. You bunch up the field. They get a, a good pit stop here, pick up a couple of spots. They're right back in the game for the stretch run. Another solid run for 
J.J. Yaley in the 44 car. He's going to get the free pass and back on the lead lap. He's running the 13th position. That's a good job by that team. Good thing Ty Dillon didn't give up on that race car, too. If he would have gave up on his race car, he'd be a lap down right now. Because of that, he's still in this race. Pit road is open. Bowman, Eric Jones, Justin Allgaier, Paul Menard, Darrell Wallace Jr., the top five. Could be the only pit stop of the day. Here they are, Chris. Well, it might be a backup car with not the uh, newest updates from Richard Childress Racing, but Paul Menard having a great run in that two car. He says it's really good early on. A little bit later in the run, gets a little bit too free on entry. So on this stop, they're going to do a track bar adjustment for fresh tires. Matt? At the beginning of the run, Justin Allgaier in the seventh, his car was on the tight side, but then it swung big time to the free side. Air pressure changed by Billy Wilburn already in that right front. Meanwhile, the 88, Alex Bowman said the car started out tight, free in, and a little bit tight center off, but extremely drivable, and he loved it. Meanwhile, Eric Jones, his car really on the free side, and a couple extra pumps. He is pitted close to the wall. He's away. Tight race off pit road. Let's see who got it. 88 team holds serve. Eric Jones comes off second. Then it's Paul Menard picking up a spot. Justin Allgaier lost one. 48 laps to go at Dover. Restart on the way. Under caution for the first time at Dover International Speedway, aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, superior performing tires to face challenging conditions on the track and the road. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. 71 laps of green. Get a caution for debris. Restart, about 40 to go. This is going to be fun, huh, fellas? Oh, and I, the veterans. Look at Paul Menard, Justin Algar, even Eric Jones, who's a winner. They've been to pit road. They can make adjustments. Alex Bowman's out there on a wing and a pair leading this race. Doesn't get to race very often. Did he make the right calls? Can he hold these chargers off? And what I'm looking at is the key to this race is Eric Jones, tremendous short run speed. Alex Bowman, tremendous long run speed. Neither of them have the other one. It takes 40 
some laps left in the race. It took 45 laps for Alex Bowman to pass Eric Jones the last run, and that's about exactly how many laps we have left. I just love this place. I love the multiple grooves, the way the track widens out, and all the places these guys can search for grip. It's going to be fun these last 45 laps. And we heard Matt Yoakum say, Eric Jones free. We'll see what adjustment they made, see if he can make it happen on the restart. Tonight, before an epic heavyweight title fight, UFC 198 starts on FS1 as dominating jiu-jitsu master Demian Maia takes on a challenger who's out to shock the world when he battles Matt Brown. Plus, Trinaldo squares off against Medeiros. It's all 7 p.m. Eastern only on FS1 or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. Alex Bowman won the race off pit road, chooses the outside lane. 45 laps to go when you get the green. Go in this damn thing. And four. <laughs> Kids motivated. He is. This is awesome. I love it that the kids in position do just that. Win this thing. We need a great restart. He passed the test of getting in and out of pit road with the lead. Can he hold it on the restart? Elliot Sadler picked up a couple of spots on pit road. He restarts sixth after starting 32nd today. Bowman fires off. That's a great nice. start for the young man. That's exactly what he needs. He needs to get the lead and run away. Let that long run speed in his car take him the distance. Three wide almost into turn one. Joey Logano was looking up there, but Elliot Sadler is going to exit turn four, turn two Eric with the Jones. fourth position. Eric Jones says, not so fast. I'm coming back at you, Alex Bowman. All guy right behind him. There's Elliot Sadler, three of the top four from JRM. Battle for the lead is on at Dover. It's so critical for Alex Bowman that he holds some decent track position at this part in the race. He knows it's going to take a few laps for his car to get going. He's got to be close enough to Eric Jones for when it does turn on, he'll be in good shape. Brad, I've always been curious. What do you think the key to a long run car versus a short car? Is it more about the car or the driver and the way he drives that car? Well, I think at this track, what we've been talking about specifically is if you have a loose car like Eric Jones has, it's very, very fast at the start of a run. Starts to fall off late in the run as the track puts rubber on the track. It looks like Alex Bowen has maybe a little bit of a tighter setup in his race car. That's why even though he was able to clear Eric Jones for the lead in one and two, Eric Jones was still able to run up on him and make the pass. And that's why it's so important now for, for Bowman to be patient. If that car's tight, he can easily overdrive it and get that right front tire heated up and the car won't come around for him. He's just got to be patient, try to hold the second position, run some laps till he thinks he can get in a position to make that charge. We're talking about the guys at the front, but nobody has passed as many cars as that guy, Elliot Sadler, 32nd to fourth today, Chris. Boy, just an amazing run by Elliot Sadler. Worked his way into the top 10. I think it was right around lap 50. 59 now up into the top four and before that last pit stop he said guys we have a really good car the balance just a little bit tight so no major adjustments on that last stop and this team has been the model of consistency in 2016 only one finish outside the top 10 in nine races a couple of weeks ago got the big win at talladega snapping a 65 race winless streak Joey Logano into the top five. Went around Paul Menard. Looks like they could have made an adjustment on that 22 during that cycle of stops. Bringing another Ford with him. Darrell Wallace Jr. having a nice afternoon. Now sixth as he gets around Paul Menard. And he needed a nice afternoon. You you have an accident right off the bat. Oh, oh we got a problem with the two. He's, He's smoking. smoking. It's smoking. It's smoking here. What's up there, Chris? Just about a lap ago, Paul Menard said over the radio, told his team, I think a shock broke. The car just bouncing around a bunch, and now it looks like he's got a tire down, guys. Boy, just a great run by that team, and everything going wrong here at lap 82. And remember, this is a backup car because his primary car had something fail on the suspension, and they got in a wreck early in practice. Uh, cut the tire. Yep, 10 I don't know what happened. This is a team that had not finished outside the top 10 all year long. He and Austin Dillon sharing the driving duties. In fact, their worst run, eighth. But it looks like today that streak is going to come to an end. Daniel Suarez trying to make a late race rally. Guy that started in the top four is 10th, and the worst of those drivers eligible for our dash for cash. And over the last five or six laps, it's been about a tenth of a second each lap that Eric Jones has beaten Alex Bowman. It'll be interesting to see when that stabilizes and if Bowman can start cutting back into that lead as the tires get hotter and worn more like he did earlier. And there you see the drivers eligible for the dash for cash. Eric Jones out front, won and picked up the big bonus at Bristol. Last month, Justin Allgaier is third. Ty Dillon is eighth after nearly going a lap down on that last run. 
And back behind him, the battle for the ninth spot. Brennan Poole has it right behind him. Daniel Suarez. Recovering from that speeding penalty had uh, right at the end of this last pit cycle. Already drove up to 10th. That's a pretty good start. Now Suarez was sixth prior to the pit stops. Caught speeding just like he was last year in this race. But that one was under green and compounded the speeding penalty by doing his pass through and getting caught again. Much better opportunity for a good result today. And talking about rallying, we saw Elliott Sadler do it and that's what Suarez is trying to do. He was actually like 20th in line on the racetrack when they threw the green due to the, the lap cars that were ahead of him after he served his penalty. Now he's up battling for that nice spot with Britton Poole. Looks like he's gonna grab it. Yes, because, Mike, when you get a speeding penalty, you don't just line up at the back of all the lead lap cars. You also line up behind all the lap down cars. So that's what makes it so impressive for him to drive up to 10th already this early in a run. And right by Brendan Poole. You see he's got a lot of turn in the center of the corner. Use that to get right to the rear bumper and put some pressure on Brendan. Move him up the track well, and you, go by. You talked about it, Brad. If a car is loose, it'll turn really good and run good on new tires. He got loose as the run went on, and it faded late. And that's... That's exactly what we haven't seen out of Elliott Sadler. His car has been fast on the long run, and he's trying to grab that third spot away from his teammate. I think Elliott has just as much speed as Alex Bowman. The key is, can he get by the seven car and be in position? Think about Elliott Sadler, if you weren't with us earlier. He got penalized for jumping the start in his heat. When he made his pass through penalty, he was speeding. He was three laps down. Had to start 32nd for the main. Long green flag run, not the recipe for success when you're starting that deep in the field. Drove it into the top 10. Eighth when we got the caution. Restarted sixth, and now a chance to be on the podium with 30 laps to go. And that's just a team effort. Elliott did his part by getting them back into contention, and then the team jumped up two spots on that restart, got him on the outside, and then he was able to drive around guys to get into contention. Junior Motorsports holding down second through fourth place. They have really, to Larry's point, stepped it up in this series. Yeah, we talked about how Joe Gibbs Racing was so dominant early. I know Joe Gibbs Racing is leading now, but you can see how much this team, this group of cars and drivers have closed the gap on those Gibbs cars. Allgaier, Sadler, third and fourth. Their new teammate, Alex Bowman, in front of them in the runner-up position. He's 1.7 seconds behind Eric Jones. Eric may be conservative, conservative here, just taking care of his equipment, but Bowman not really letting him get away. Now, he lost some ground here with the lap vehicle, but we know Bowman is better over the long haul. I think he's still got plenty of time to get up there and make this interesting. Well, 30 laps at Dover is a long time, but keep in mind, when he took the lead the last run, he ran down a three-second gap in six laps. <laughs> so put that in perspective. It can happen very quickly. That, that thing changed and headed in a new direction in a hurry, and that could be lying ahead for Bowman. That car just getting better and better. Last time by, there's a little bit of traffic, but Bowman beat Eric Jones by three-tenths. So he just seems to have that power to hang on all throughout a run. Dare Wallace, Jr., Hanging with, but can't get around Joey Logano. And now back to the battle for third. Sadler has a nose inside of his teammate, Justin Allgaier. Look at him power through the center of the corner. Makes that run. Probably backs out of the gas a little bit there on exit just to keep it low. And then completes the pass. That's a key pass for Elliott. I think that'll give him a shot at the race win. We need to find out from our resident crew chief if the caution flag flies here in about five laps, what are we going to do? Are we going we gonna to take a chance and get some tires, or are we going to stay out here and ride it out? Well, only 12 cars on the lead lap, so you'd certainly have something to think about here. Makes me nervous. I like, I love all this stuff. This is fun. Daniel Suarez rallying after, after his car went away with him on the first run, and then there's Ty Dillon. You talked about it. He fought to stay on the lead lap. Now he's up in that eighth spot. 24 to go here, Larry. Your observations as we get set to finish it up. Well, I was already thinking about the question that Michael was answering, but I think your point with only 12 drivers on the lead lap, if we get the caution, whether it's now or 10 or 15 laps from now, if you're, say, probably Joey Logano on back, you come and get four tires. But where it's going to be a chess match will be for Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, Elliott Sadler. I, I think if we get down to less than 15 to go, 
those guys are forced to stay out even if the caution comes out. You know where this di is really difficult is, is three of our top five rookie crew chiefs. You got Chris Gabehart calling the shots for Eric Jones, Kevin Mendering for Elliot Sadler, who's third, and Brian Wilson atop the pit box for Joey Logano. And that's what I love about the Xfinity Series. We not only have a mix, a great mix of veterans and rookies on the racetrack, it's the same thing on the pit box. Guys learning the craft of crew chief in the Xfinity Series and someday looking to ascend up to the Sprint Cup Series to be crew chiefs there. Mike Wheeler, a great example of that. Denny Hamlin's crew chief. There's many examples of that along Kyle Road. Bush's championship crew chief was in the Xfinity Series for a long time. Adam, Adam Stevens. Stevens. Yeah, there's so many great stories like that in the Sprint Cup Series, thanks to this, this proving ground, this tough Xfinity Series. Suarez really fast since the restart. Let's see what his day has looked like. Started in the top five, fell back, trying to rally again. See the speeding penalty, lap 72. Too fast under caution when they made that pit stop. 20 laps to go. Eric Jones has moved his advantage to nearly three seconds over second place Alex Bowman in some lap traffic here going around the other rookie named Jones. That's Brandon Jones who's had a tough go of it. He's 22nd now, three laps down. Tough weekend of it. A fast driver normally. I got in a crash yesterday and then just got pinched into the wall off turn two in this event. And no luck in Dover for the young man from Georgia. With Eric Jones out front, let's take this opportunity. Say hello to his father, Dave, battling cancer back at home in Michigan. Dave, we're all thinking about you. I know the entire garage has you in your, their thoughts. We do here at Fox Sports. And I know you'd love to see Eric pull into victory lane one more time. Got to be so proud of that young man, not only of extreme talent behind the wheel, but just a good kid, appreciates this opportunity, respects the, the sport and, and what it's all about, and obviously knows how to call for the right adjustment. He didn't like the balance of his car, and it showed during that first run, but man, he's picking them up and putting them down now. And he's doing a great job behind the wheel, not just calling the adjustments, but just driving the race car to its a limit. We see week in and week out, he's one of the best in this series, if not the best. Here's his 19-year-old teammate, Matt Tift, wheeling the 18 car this weekend. Ty Dillon, who nearly went a lap down prior to that lap caution, right behind him in the eighth spot. And mentioned Daniel Suarez, how quick he is since the green flag went back in the air. Trying to pick up a few more positions with 16 to go here at the Monster Mile. That's a real scrum there. Those cars are battling for that spot. Tift is seventh. He was up high the last lap, takes it to the bottom. And, and if Eric Jones could see this, he would say, come on, teammates, <laughs> don't race that hard and cause a caution. I got the lead here with now 15 remaining. It looks like Eric Jones and his team has done a great job with the adjustments on the car. His, his speed is holding on just a little bit better this run. His last lap was two tenths slower than Alex Bowman in second but he was in traffic, uh, and we'd see all the last run when he was in traffic, he would lose half a second to a second. So obviously adjustments are kicking in for him, and he has a little more long run speed. It's going to be really hard at this point for Bowman to get to him. And with that kind of an advantage, is he pacing himself here a little bit? With, I'm with sure he lead? learned a lot from the last run, absolutely. And, and whether that's driving the car or the adjustments, uh, it's hard to say, but uh, he's definitely holding on a little bit better with the speed this run. We knew he had the short run speed. It was a matter of keeping it long enough to hold off Alex Bowman. You know, every now, and long, every now and then kids come along that are special. As soon as you see them, you're like, okay, he's going cup racing one day. Eric Jones is a great example of that. I remember back in 2006 in his family car, Brad Keselowski showed up running around the top of the Atlanta <laughs> Motor Speedway as fast as the leaders. And I tapped someone, I said, whoever he is, he's really good. Sprint Cup champion. That's the credentials that this kid has. That's what he brings to the game. And I believe that he is a future champion in the Sprint Cup series. Eric Jones beat Kyle Busch in the Snowball Derby. Kyle said, I'm pretty talented. That must mean he's pretty good. Tapped him on the shoulder. Come drive for him in the Camping World Truck Series. Was the youngest winner ever at the time when he went to victory lane at Phoenix a few years ago. And you have Full to have time. a lot of respect for Toyota. for two. got a spin two. Trying to get a caution. He's on the bottom. And Jones didn't want to see that. 11 to go. Caution is out for Brendan Gaughan, who was running 11th. Wow. This, this uh, We talked to Larry McReynolds about pit strategy. Who will pit? Who will stay out? I believe the leaders 
have to stay out this late in the going, but look, just loose is Brendan gone. That tells you how much these guys are fighting these cars once the tires get some laps on them. Now you're going to have to stock them up and, re and restart them on those older tires. This could get interesting. Well, crew chief, it's all on your shoulders. Yeah, it's days like this. I'm glad, glad I'm in the Hollywood Hotel. But yeah, we, again, 12 drivers on the lead lap. We're probably going to go back racing with somewhere around six or seven to go. I just think Jones, Bowman, Sadler, Algar, I think they have to stay out. I think somewhere there about Logano in fifth, Wallace Jr. in sixth. They've got four brand new Goodyear tires laid in the pits. What do you have to lose? Come get them if you're about fifth on back. And sometimes if the leader stays out, everybody behind them ducks in and says, okay, you've got control of this race. We're going to take our chances by coming to pit road. It'll be interesting to see what happens. And, and a lot of lap cars between Eric Jones and, and second place Alex Bowman, so they will know exactly <laughs> what he's doing, They have Brad. plenty of time to Huge think about Huge advantage it. for them. And these spotters are all over the radios telling everybody who's doing what. But to that point, because all those lap cars are there, he can come down pit road, get his service. He's got the number one pit stall because he was fast qualifier and should be able to win the battle off pit road easily as long as nobody stays should. out behind should him, right? is, is the, the key point here. Of course, we see Dover, there's a lot of pit road penalties uh, and you can never take a pit stop for granted, that's for sure. 11 oh. cars on the lead lap. Pit road was closed that time, by the way. And you can't take any laps on this track for granted either, can you, Adam? I, I learned that the hard way <laughs> from a couple of guys that have won here earlier. I said, in the heat, foregone conclusion with about five to go. Who's going to advance for the dash for cash? And the guys to my right, quick to point out, there are no foregone conclusions when you're dealing with a monster mile. Look what just happened. <laughs> Eric Jones thought he was just cruising home to another victory, another $100,000 bonus. Brendan Gaughan, one of the most experienced racers in the field, has it get away from him down in turns one and two. And now, I don't think there's any decisions for the 20 team. I think they stay out. But I believe everybody behind them might need to think about pitting. What do you want here, Brad? Oh, I don't want to be in the 20 car crew chief <laughs> shoes. <laughs> because if I'm everyone else, I'm watching what he does, and I'm going to do the exact opposite. You guys, you and your crew chief, Paul Wolf, you like to roll the dice. You like to mix it up quite a lot. So uh, we'll see if any of these guys have the same sort of attitude you have. 11 cars on the lead lap. If he comes and even four or five come from with him from behind, I mean, you're looking at five laps to go or so on the restart. I think he can drive drive through the field and if here he they comes come. down. He road stayed here. out and everybody else is coming. There you That's go. That's exactly how it goes every time. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, Justin Algar stayed out. So did Logano. So we've got a good mixture. Darrell Wallace Jr. Here they come, Chris. Well, and Elliot Sather, wow, surprising he's coming into pit lane. Going to take, I think, at least two tires there. No major adjustments on that car. Matt Tift also coming into pit lane. Going to be right side tires for Matt Tift. Going to be a track bar adjustment on his car. We're just looking at those right side tires going on Elliot Sather's car right now. Lots of action down here in pit lane, Matt. And the 88 of Bowman, they're on pit road. Right side tires calling the audible. Going to go for four because so many cars hit pit road. Meanwhile, Eric Jones, he was told, middle the back stretch, just stay out. But enough cars they feel like may have stayed out that could be good blockers. Yeah, I think <laughs> there's a nice buffer there. And when you look at the lap count, as long as we don't get overtime, and we have in the last two races here in the Xfinity Series, I think he's going to be good. Four yeah, he, cars stayed out. He's got a full row behind him of guys that stayed out. But one of those guys is Joey Logano, and we know his experience and how he knows how to get it done in a hurry. So this could still get very interesting. Seven cars came down, got tires. They're going to be hungry on the restart. What about Bubba Wallace? He's put himself in a position after wrecking his car right off the bat in practice yesterday. Now he finds himself ready to race for the win. Six laps to go. Got a shootout coming at Dover. What a day it's been at the Monster Mile. I think we got a really good race car. Have a good solid day here. Yes, sir. Inside, inside. There you go. Hold on to it. It's got a smoke on the left front here. It's got a rub, Junior. Pretty bad one. Mike Dillon, I'll pay full price for a damn air conditioner. Never know what you might hear on the radio here at Dover International Speedway. Air conditioner in the booth's working great. It's nice up here. In support of Mental Health Month, Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. 
and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those affected by mental health conditions. Learn more about how to be stigma free and visit foxsportssupports.com. Caution with just under 15 to go. An example of how challenging this racetrack can be. We saw plenty of issues yesterday in practice. You're going to have to be friends with the monster if you're going to win today. And this is not the track you want to be friends with. It will jump up and bite you very, very quickly. You see these wrecks here from cup practice, Xfinity practice. Another one from Xfinity practice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this is going through everyone's mind right now in a late race restart. Half the field on new tires, half the field on old tires. This is a wreck from the second heat, but Justin Marks glad he's okay. I have a feeling the monster isn't done eating. We could we could see a couple more bites because this lineup is going to be scrambled up. And, you know, we're, we're not at a mile and a half where you've got four or five wide lanes getting into turn one, but you've got the same drivers behind the wheels that are going to try to make it three and four wide, and that's when the monster can take a chunk out of your car. Going to get a restart with five to go. Alex Bowman going to roll from the sixth position. He's led 33 laps today. You think I can get them three wide through one and two? Sure you can, but, you know, just be smart. You know what you can do with that thing. Oh, I love that mentality. He knows that's his shot. How about the race leader, Matt? Chose the outside. Chris Gabehart told him, just make sure you clean your tires well. They're going to be picking stuff up. Get your mind right. You can still do this. Another guy that needs to get his mind right is Justin Algar. He's got to leave with Eric Jones if he's going to win this race. And remember, that's a battle for not only a win, but a $100,000 bonus in the Xfinity Series. Top four on old tires. Elliott Sadler, the one inside row three, the first one to come down pit road and get fresh ones. Restart, five laps to go. Who's going to tame the monster mile? Look at Bubba Wallace. He's pushing the 20 car of Eric Jones. And that's going to help move forward Alex Bowman's lane. Give him a shot. He's all the way up to fourth already. Bowman boxed in. Eric Jones able to pull away a little bit. First oh. car on four tires or with tires, 88 Alex Bowman in fourth. He has got four and a half laps to make something of it. Right behind his teammate, Justin Allgaier. Darrell Wallace Jr. up to second. Four to go this time by. I think the fact that Bowman's car isn't really fast when the tires are brand new is hurting him because it allowed Justin Algar to drop down in front of him and slow Bowman's momentum. Side by side for sixth, Logano, Elliott, Sadler. Give it to the one. Three laps to go now. Bowman, Bowman. to the inside. Working over Justin Allgaier, that's for third. Teammates racing there, give it to the 88. Does he have time? Two and a half laps remaining at Dover. Eric Jones nearly a full second in front of Darrell Wallace Jr. A second and a half back is Alex Bowman. They're coming off turn four. Two more, keep that rhythm. Whoa, three wide up in turn four. Is that gonna work? Saw that on the top of your screen. They sorted it out. Brendan Poole along with Daniel Suarez almost balled him up. A caution now would equal overtime. Eric Jones does not want to see that. Wants to see the white flag. He'll get it this time. One mile to his white second flag, victory of the year. White flag sponsored by Credit One Bank. Eric Jones trying to get his second victory and for the second time win $100,000. And Darrell Wallace Jr. from a backup car. He's running second right now. But that's the man the story's all about. Win number two in 2016 for Eric Jones comes at Dover. Eric Jones, I told you there was only one option this weekend. All we had to do was come and do it, and we did it. We do it every weekend. I believe in you. I believe in this race team. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Darrell Wallace Jr. in a backup car comes back to get his best career finish and Alex Bowman does the same third in his debut in that 88 this season. A couple things I'll take away from this race. The talent of that 20 car driver Eric Jones, the way that team made those adjustments and I want to see Alex Bowman race more. That was so <laughs> fun watching him battle to the front. Alex Bowman and Eric Jones both did a great job. Didn't work out for Bowman at the end but Eric Jones, man, 
this is what you have to do if you're a driver trying to develop the next finish series. You have to win big races. Dash for cash races are big races, and he's in victory lane at Dover, and he deserves every bit of it. When we came in at 2016, a lot of people dubbed this guy the favorite to win the championship. Eric Jones answering the bell, his second victory of the year in 10 races, fourth time in his career. He's gotten the checkered flag in the Xfinity Series. How do you like your donuts, Adam? Smoky? That's how we're getting them today. And Joe Gibbs racing. Pretty good when it comes to Dover International Speedway. Sixth win here in 2016. And when it comes to this racetrack, they've now been to victory lane 10 times. That is the most. Not much better feeling than that. Doing the burnout and look at the fans. The fans have all walked down to the fence to, to celebrate and salute young Eric Jones. He's gonna hop out and grab him a checkered flag. As a driver, you know that too. You see all those fans and boy, do you get pumped. You get energy from that. All down here at the fans, uh, taking pictures, Snapchat, Instagram. It's a new age, a new day, and Eric Jones is part of it. Mentioned the six wins this season for Joe Gibbs Racing, most of any team, four for Kyle Busch, two now for Eric Jones, and those 10 victories at the Monster Mile Board. The coach's kids know how to deliver when it comes to this place. Eric Jones led the most laps, 76 out front, including the last one. Here's where the Dash for Cash guys finish today, another $100,000 for the 19-year-old out of Michigan.
It's all over at Dover International Speedway. Eric Jones, second win of the year in the Ollie's Bargain Outlet 200. Let's go to Victory Lane and join Matt Yoakum. A dominant day, $100,000. That'll buy a lot of quarter midget tires. Go back to the final caution, Eric. The 88, the 7, they're all hitting pit road. You stayed out. What went through your mind? Well, at first I couldn't see how many came to pit road, so uh, I wasn't too sure. I was uh, a little anxious to see how many clearly came and how many stayed out, but fortunately enough, stayed out to make it uh, viable for us to still get the win here. And uh, thanks to the 6 for the push, Darrell Wallace. That was a uh, big key to getting us back out front. And uh, just an awesome day. Had the research camera good, and uh, I wasn't too sure about it after the heat race, but uh, it turned out to be all right. So just thanks to everybody. Thanks to GameStop. Hisense, uh, Interstate Batteries, Toyota, JGR Engines, uh, Xfinity, NASCAR. It's just, uh, I couldn't be here without all them. And it's just, uh, just a really cool day to get a win here at uh, Dover. Fun place to race, but at the end of your heat, you said you had a lot of concern about this package for today. But did Chris Gabehart keep you focused in the game there on that final restart, knowing what you were up against with the fresher tires? Yeah, he did. He uh, he kept me focused and uh, and in the game all day. I would say even after the heat race, you know, I I was uh, not so sure about it, and he felt pretty confident about it. And we weren't uh, and um, we were pretty good there on the short run, but not on the long run. And um, ended up that it came down to a short run, we were able to hold him off. Second dash for cash victory for Eric Jones, Chris. Well, it was a tough, challenging Friday. Had to go to a backup car, but boy, did it turn into good things on Saturday. After that checkered flag coming out, listening to you on the radio, it sounded like you won the race. Hell yeah, forget the 20. Um, you're welcome for that restart, Eric. Uh, we got a really good start. Our Ford Mustang was really hooked up. Um, man, I knew that the next last restart, we started on the bottom, lost a couple spots, and we were kind of in the catbird seat. I was hoping Eric were messed up, but man, it's really hard to mess up in those cars, but we're working, man. This is... Uh, this has been a rough weekend for us starting out backup car um, that just goes to the credit of all my guys standing here for for thrash on this thing to get our loudmouth uh, Mustang in a P2 spot. I wouldn't have freaking call it. This is a good day. Congrats to my girlfriend Amanda. She graduated today. Darrell Wallace Jr. gets his best finish of the year. Well, Justin Allgaier wins his heat race and then brings it home fourth there. What do you think of this whole format in this kind of day? Well, the, the heat races are awesome. Huge, huge props to guys for what they do for the sport. And the dash for cash, I mean, I'd like to be where Eric's at right now, celebrating, but, uh, you know, solid day for our TaxSlayer.com Chevy. We uh, we had a great heat race. We made some adjustments there, and unfortunately just, uh, just a little bit off in the main. Felt like we were able to maintain a little bit, but just unfortunately weren't able to, to make the passes that we needed to. But all in all, solid day, top five finish, great for points. And... Um, We'll come back next week and try them again, or two weeks, I guess. Yes, great day for Junior Motorsports overall. Alex Bowman hasn't raced since November last year, and really, you just haven't missed a beat. Alex, coming into this weekend, did you think a top three was possible? I think uh, I, I knew that if I did my job, it was. You know, these race cars have proven that they can run like that. Everybody at Junior Motorsports does such a good job bringing cars to the racetrack. Uh, Dave and all the guys on this car, they worked really, really hard. The thing was awesome. Obviously, that first long run, we were killing them at the end, and was really excited about that. I wish it would have just gone green and had green flag stops. I, I feel like we're in the Cup Series the last couple of years. That would have kind of played into my hand a little bit. But, you know, we didn't have short run speed we needed. Uh, we put on four tires there at the end, just trying to win the thing instead of settling for second and came up a little, a little bit short. But I'm just so blessed to be here and so thankful for the opportunity from JRM and Advanced Auto Parts. Everybody high at home watching on the Xfinity X1 Go app. It's uh, it's been a lot of fun this weekend and glad to get back to it and be ready for Pocono. Congratulations. Alex Bowman comes home third. Ty Dillon had a solid car today. Brings it home fifth, but a little bit of drama to start the race. How did you put that whole fuel thing aside and just focus on the task at hand? Uh, it was really tough. You know, our, our, I was, we, our Reem Chevy was so good. It just, um, man, it's frustrating. We had a car that I feel like we could have won this race and, and really, really showed something. But, uh, I don't know if we had something with the tire or what came apart internally or what, but totally different race car for that run. And then we put another set on and it's back to where we were. Um, and you don't know whether to adjust around that or not. It's just frustrating. You get so far back and I love these heat races. It puts you in a, in a, it's a, it's fun and you can be aggressive and get up there and have been successful in them. 
but then it uh, makes our feature nothing. You know, you don't have any time to recover. So uh, I would like to add some laps, but uh, and maybe we'd had a better finish. But it's uh, frustrating fifth, but it's a fifth place finish. So we'll go on and just. We're ready to win, man. We're, we're good right now. It's just uh, not falling. And, and the things aren't falling together for us yet, but we'll get one here soon. Thanks, Ty. Jamie, third top five of the year for Ty Dillon. The second in the last three races for the driver from Richard Childress Racing. It's Eric Jones in victory lane here at Dover. You know, there are certain trophies you just want on your shelf. Eric Jones now has one of the most coveted. Miles the Monster hoisted high. Eric, a victor for the second time this season, delivering at Dover International Speedway. But it wasn't easy on, on Eric or his crew chief this afternoon, guys. And you just had to appreciate the job the team did. He talked so disappointed about that car after the heat. He said, we're, we're junk. We don't have any balance. But they put it all together. And when it counted, he ran some of the fastest laps of the race on those old tires. That was impressive. Absolutely. It's, it's so easy for a driver to get rattled in those late race situations. You know, you got cars behind you that have tires. You don't have tires. Of course, he got a little push, a little help from his buddy, uh, Darrell Wallace, to help him clear the restart. But it's still so easy to get rattled and make a mistake. Eric Jones, no mistakes. Team did a great job. Fast cars as always. Great having you here. Enjoyed it in 2016. Best of luck tomorrow, okay? Thank you. Hope I'll be back. Danielle, we're looking forward to another exciting afternoon at the Monster Mile. Yeah, Adam, thank you so much. Twos are wild for your winner, Eric Jones. $200,000 in Dash for Cash money, just two weeks shy of his 20th birthday. And think about a year ago, led 70 laps, busted for speeding on pit road late in the race, finished ninth. Strategy all over the board from staying out, the top two, Bowman taking four, Allgaier also staying out, Ty Dillon taking two. Yeah, when we knew that, when you go back racing that late in the game with that few of cars on the lead lap, you know you're going to have strategy all over the place. Houdini and Doyle is next on Fox. Sprint Cup Series coverage from Dover starts at 1.30 tomorrow. That's on FS1. And we're back in two weeks with Xfinity Series coverage from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Thanks again for watching from Dover, Delaware. We're right back here tomorrow. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.